Welcome back to the Modus Super Series this week. It is day three of our action in 2023. And we've got some senior stars in action over the course of the next couple of weeks, all building up to the second World Seniors Darts Championship. Richie Housen, of course, was a, a big name in that event last year, made a name for himself. Peter Manley, uh, one of the biggest names in it, and he is in action this week. The pair, though, have got off to very differing starts in this group, and here is Henry Deacon with the details of what's happened so far. Peter Manley is yet to get off the mark here in Group A, but it was an improved performance on Tuesday. He'll be looking to get that elusive victory today. Andy Jenkins finds himself on a pack of players on eight points in fourth and fifth, respectively. His task for the day will be to get himself into Group B tomorrow night. The same can be said of Darren Johnson, who took out this 1-2-3 in his game with Jenkins yesterday. Adam Mould, the ADC qualifier, has impressed on his debut in the competition. This 1-4-8, the highlight finish of yesterday's session. Martin Turner looks like the man, if anyone to defone Richie Housen, he's the only man to beat him this week. He's second in the table on 14 points. But Housen has won nine out of 10 matches, four points clear at the top of the table going into today. And his one, his ton plus finishing repertoire was continued against Jenkins yesterday. But well, we'll talk about what's happened so far and what's going to happen today in a few moments' time. But I do want to not ignore the brilliance that was the World Championship final last night. Peter Manley in action here this week, of course. And he remains the man to have reached the most PDC World Championship finals without winning one because it was a brilliant display from Michael Smith to win at the third time of asking. Yeah, I wondered where you was going with that then, because you said the brilliance of the final, then you brought Peter Manley into it, who's not really produced what we expect of Peter Manley so far. But yeah, Michael Smith, brilliant last night. The nine data, I did kind of think that was going to happen. That's the sort of game you get a nine data in. kind of thought we might have got two, but then again, I'm a bit greedy like that. It gets people in the mood for, for darts, doesn't it? People who might be at home wanting to pick up the darts, starting out for the first time to see that kind of thing. And there's a great pathway now, isn't it, through the ADC and then maybe playing here at the Super Series, like we saw Adam Warner before Christmas, follow that exact path. Yeah, it was the Willie Ball and Nine Darter, wasn't it, against Bradley Brooks last year's World Championship that really got Adam Warner wanting to go and take darts more seriously. He was just playing in his university and he saw that and then went out and took on the ADC tour. We saw him come here and he won that week £5,000, which surprised him. He said that, what, did it triple his net worth, £5,000? Yeah, but we're at the other end of the spectrum for the next couple of weeks here. We've got uh, some senior stars building up to that World Seniors Championship, as I mentioned. Peter Manley, definitely there. There are other players who are, have still got a chance to be there as well, the likes of Martin Turner, Darren Johnson, Richie Housen, all playing very good stuff. Um, let's take a look at the table to see how things stand right now and it is Housen has been the key performer last week but that one defeat at the hands of Martin Turner means it's not set in stone just yet. No it's um, it's wide open still in these early matches it could be closed out quite quick but Martin Turner in our first game takes on Darren Johnson that's going to be an intriguing game for sure Richie Housen's first games Martin Turner and Adam Mould so if they can get those wins over Richie Housen this could get quite interesting. One thing we've learned about Richie Housen, though, is he seems to get weaker as the day goes on. So he'll be quite happy having those games come up early. And Adam Mould, he's not old, if you like. He's the one that isn't from the, the World Seniors kind of section. He is the ADC qualifier. Certainly impressed on debut. Yeah, he's done nothing like this before in terms of playing in an event like this. But yet he's came here and he's playing really, really well. His timing, he, the shots under pressure, everything that you look at as a dart player checklist is ticking all the boxes. He certainly is. And just looking further down that table, Darren Johnson and Andrew Jenkins still in contention for Group B. Uh, for those who haven't seen the Super Series before, if you get into Group B, you've got a better chance of making it to finals night on Saturday. But you'd think that a defeat or two would put paid to their chances. Yeah, so that's really going to put all eyes on these early games, really, because, like, again, it could be pretty done pretty early when we look at the way that this is going to unfold. I think Darren Johnson's been nowhere near his level of performance. He did have that one game yesterday against Andy Jenkins, 101 average, but Andy Jenkins is looking the more likely of the two if someone's going to come out of those five and fourth places. Yeah, and we might as well talk about Peter Manley. We have every day so far, still yet to win, but a much improved 
display yesterday. In fact, almost won his first match, Mr. Dart to do so. Do you see that victory coming today? No, I don't, to be honest. It is improved, but there's still a long way off. He, he's starting to show signs. He's showing signs he can win legs. Can you put four legs together? I don't think he can at the moment. We, he can certainly show the ability. I think he had a 15 dart leg to kick the day off yesterday. And we all thought, oh, maybe this is Peter Manley starting to get back to it. But the action's not quite there. It's a little bit flicky. And when he throws properly, when he can get that extension, get that rhythm going, he's playing some good stuff. But he just can't find a way to keep that consistent. And doing it over four legs or two four legs, I don't see it happening today. Yeah, I'll get, let you into a secret, actually. Andy Jenkins, who plays Peter Manley in the second match, did tell me that he thinks that his match with Peter Manley today is going to be better than Michael Smith against Michael Van Gerwen last night. Can you see that happening? Um, it d defines what the word better means. <laughs> if we're talking averages and stats, no. If we're talking drama and entertainment, m maybe, because these two have already started. When I got here this morning around... 8.15, I walked into the practice room and I have a little chat because me and Peter Manley like to talk about our FPL leagues as well and it started, about 15 minutes, them two going to and fro at each other and you can see it when they play each other on the stage that there's a lot of history there and it ended with Jenkins saying something, something along the lines of he would never want to lose to Peter Manley again in his life. <laughs> Interesting, well that's the second game today. Um, Let's just for a moment talk again about that World Championship final last night. We have got a, a slight delay in play starting today, so we might as well make the most of it. Uh, there was a leg in there, wasn't there, that has to go down as the greatest leg of darts ever played. Well, Mardell couldn't speak, could he? It was an incredible performance. And Michael Van Gerwen missing the nine darter, then Michael Smith taking out the nine darter. Will we ever see anything like that again? And especially in a World Championship final. It's all right seeing that. We, we see things like that quite regular. Not like that, but like amazing darts. But to do it in the World Championship final at that point of the game where both players are jostling for position as well, incredible. Yeah, Michael Smith now the world number one as well, a brand new world champion. What were your thoughts on the, the tournament overall? Really good event, actually. I think some people really start Josh Rock sort of showing what he can do. We know what he can do. We've seen what he can do. But... It's for the, the viewers at home. Like We know darts, and the people that know darts have known Josh Rock for the last year. But people that have just watched the World Championship, Premier League, all those sort of big major events have never seen him before. He is now on that radar. He really stood out. Alan Souter, great story. He was going back in between to be a firefighter, and then he's coming back down to do so as well. And when we look at people in the past, like Johnny Clayton, who kept his job for a while, we look at Wayne Mardle, who kept the job for a while, and then when he stopped doing that job, the performance started to dip, and we look at Johnny Clayton, if he's going to go down that road now that it's darts is the be-all and end-all. And I like the fact that darts isn't the be-all and end-all for people. I know when I went full-time myself, I really struggled with it. Waking up, and then it's about practicing now, and it's about darts. And every day you wake up, and it's about darts. I really struggled with just having that one focus in life. And I think with a person like Alan Souter and the amount of activity he likes in his life, I think it's good that he keeps doing that as well. And uh, just quickly, finally, uh, to end this conversation, Q School starts next week. Um, will there have been a lot of players watching that? I said inspired to go and pick up the darts. Will there be a few players that have been on the professional circuit? I mean, you're one of them who watch that final and think, actually, I don't quite fancy going to Q School, getting a card and, and playing these lot every week. Why do you think I'm stood here right now <laughs> speaking to you? Um, you look at that and you think that is the top, top level. The, the main thing to do, when, if you're considering going to Q School, if you're looking at doing something, is thinking about where you want to be and what that looks like. I always used to, it was a jokey comment, but I used to say I was the standard bearer of the PDC. The reason being, because I was always around about the 64 mark. I was always in that sort of 60, 64. I was always keeping my card every year. Now, if we're taking the 128 Pro Tour players and we're saying the middle of that is 64, what are they doing? That is the level. Obviously, if you want to be top 32, look at what they're doing. If you want to be the world champion, look at what Michael Smith's doing. Nine darters in the world mm. championship final. But look at what that is. Because we always see people go, oh, you need 100 plus averages. Who put 100 plus average in the world championship just gone? That's the pinnacle of darts. What you need to be doing is you need to be consistently around about that 91 mark. If you can consistently produce that, you're going to be competitive. You can get yourself in that top 64, keep your tour card, and play in the World Championships. Absolutely. Well, when we come back, we'll be getting action underway here at the Moda Super Series on Wednesday. There's going to be a slight delayed start to the play, just sorting out a few gremlins in the system. But when we return, it will be Martin Turner against Darren Johnson, kicking off Wednesday's action at the Super Series.
Well, we're all set to go now here at the Moda Super Series for Wednesday's action. The first match of the day is Darren Johnson against Martin Turner. Turner still in the hunt to try and catch Richie Housen at the top of the Group A table. And our man Henry Deacon caught up with him a little earlier this morning. Martin, day three for yourself here at the Super Series. A couple of points off the top position in the group. How do you assess your first two days' play? Um, I'm reasonably happy, to be honest, because every time I've come down here, I've felt the pressure a little bit. I've not settled, not got the results. I've lost games I should have won before. I can play better. I know I can play better, but I'm getting a few wins this time. So slowly I'm settling in. Just same again today. I've got five games to play. I'm going to go to win all five and see where it lands. That's all he can do. Do you think the experience of this competition format from the past has actually helped you this time round? Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, I've been here twice before. First time was Southampton before it, the finish there. So I've only had two days here before. And when you've not had a lot of stage experience, to come on here, it's, it's daunting. And especially with cameras about when you're not used mm -hmm. to them and you know people are watching. It's, yeah, it's affected me. So, yeah, I've settled down a bit more this time. And we look at the way the league table's occupied for yourself. There's an opportunity to finish in top spot, but also you know that there's players below you as well that are occupying for that second and third group B berth. That's exactly right, yeah. If you're not going to go out straight through today, you want to be second or third. That's the aim. So I think I've got a pretty good buffer from, th I think, about six points at the minute, I think. So, yeah, worst case scenario, Thursday night. Well, we look forward to watching you play. Martin, good luck. Superb, thanks. So he's calling the worst case scenario of Thursday night, Martin Turner, but still in the hunt to try and top the group four points behind Richie House. And that could become two with victory here over Darren Johnson, who himself has ambitions of finishing in the top three. To guide you through all 15 fixtures today are Henry Deacon and Matthew Egg. Good morning, gents. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday here at the Super Series, where we will finalise the first spot into Saturday night's finals here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. Richie Housen is the man in pole position to do exactly that. He's won nine of his ten games so far. But Martin Turner is the most realistic challenger to Richie's hopes of making it through to the Fab Six. He takes on Darren Johnson in the opening game of the day. He finds himself fourth from the table, still in the race for a top three place and a spot in Group B. But you get the sense he's going to have to get victory here. Four points behind Adam Mould in the table. So... 15 games to look forward to today here at the Super Series, and we're going to watch it in the company of Matthew Edgar. Morning, Matt. Morning, Henry. First flag, it's Martin to throw first. This one is... Uh, Game on. Got an interesting complexion to it. Nice early one for us here. But in terms of the head-to-head -head for these two, we mentioned this one yesterday, that away from here, this is the most level game we can one get. 140. However, the bookies today think they can split them. They think they've found the answer. Head-to-head -head before 96. in all of the events coming into here, four all out of the eight matches that they played. But here, this week, the two matches they played so far, 4-0 to Martin Turner, 4-3 to Martin Turner. And the bookies are making Martin Turner quite a strong odds-on favourite in this one. And I'm guessing that's down to that league position. 85. Most certainly, he finds himself six points in front of his opponent going into this game. 100. And it has been quite a solid start for Martin. 2 1 after 9. It was an interesting interview you had with Martin 95. as well earlier on today. It was great listening to him speak and him saying that actually the experience that he's had previously down here and playing in front of the cameras is now starting to pay off for him. And it'll be interesting to see how that works as well. The experience of playing down here in this sort of environment pays off next week when the Q school starts. And we saw last year a 16. lot of players that played Matthew in this Carl environment going and getting tour cards. I strongly expect to see that again. One for one. Treble 19. Double 12. 117. Darren, you're not on 141. I thought that's what's meant to happen in this game. And on double 85, 12 as well, Matthew I thought we was going to get a Wayne Mardell-esque call there from Henry Deacon. Game shot on the first I, can't I can't speak! I can't speak! 
Martin Turner takes the opening leg of the day. It was in 16. We'll let him off. Second leg, Darren to throw first. That Game moment, on. though, last night, that nine data. Everything about it was so perfect, wasn't it? The, the first, the nine data being missed, then the nine data going, and then Wayne Mardle's commentary of that situation 100. just really added to it. I honestly thought that he was commentating on a bouncy castle. 97. And people ask, why do we have comms cam? It is exactly for moments like that. 100. No surprise you didn't have any voice left. 140. Well, in turn, I was woke up this morning and he mentioned his interview. He wants to go win five from five. Martin Turner, play like this. You will win five from five. 57. This is a great start to the day from Martin Turner. Day three of the early mornings. 100. He's got limited stage experience, but he has played in the UK Open six times. That's no... Give me event. You've either got to be a tour card holder or you've got to win one of those Riley's qualifiers, which are a long slog of a day. Martin Turner achieved that feat six times 60. across his career. Darren Newcar, 104. He did play really well one year, but lost out to somebody. Larry Martin, tops for Darren. 84. Martin Newcar, 104. So Darren Johnson hasn't really played his form this week that we've been seeing for the season. Looking better today, but Game he's up against a man line. who is Martin playing Turner. inspired darts here. 104 finish for Martin Turner. Most importantly there, a break of throw. Darren Johnson, much, much better though. Like Martin to and throw you throw sort first. of feel that Game the way on. the darts are going in for Darren Johnson and the, the action that he's going to... Get a bit more competitive today than we have seen. We did see that big game yesterday, the 101, which ironically came against Andy Jenkins, who seems to walk into it quite a lot this week. 56. Although the good news is him and Peter have promised a better game than last night in the next one. I loved it this morning, coming in and listening to them two at each other. That was entertaining to say the least that's what we should do we should get both the players on stage don't do interviews separately put them face to face we'll probably need a security guard as well just in between the two of them and just give them a mic and just leave them to it and then hope we're broadcasting tomorrow 180. first 180 of the day goes to martin turner he's playing well isn't he 182, 140, is 104 finish, two from three. And he just looks so likely. He said he's getting more comfortable. He's getting more relaxed. He's getting better in this environment. 92. You are seeing that before your very eyes. And in fairness to Darren Johnson, he's averaging 88, but he's just ran into it here. But he may have carved an opening for himself. Matthew McCarr, 74. If Turner cannot take this 74, this is for a 3-0 lead. One dart at tops. 54, Darren Newcar, 91. And it's these middle range chances, which is what Johnson has been restricted to. 88 left. Double 14 for the break of throw. 77. And you sent that had 20. to go. As turnover turns for double 10 for 3 0. 0. Now, what Martin Turner's Martin done there Turner. by going out in 17 darts is he's forcing Darren Johnson to go out in 15. So he's saying to Darren Johnson, if you are going to break my throw, you need to average 100. Well, Darren, Darren Johnson to throw first. Game on. did carve himself a dart, carved himself the opportunity, but just came inside. Martin Turner laying down the, down the law, near it for 94 well, average. That is in that block where, let's say, if you get that 93 average to beat it, you need to be going up to that 100. Or 68. you've got to win those mini moments. Darren Johnson is closer to the 100 mark. 95.56 and climbing. Looking so much better today. 100. But yet, hasn't yet registered a leg. 
And yesterday, that average probably would have won him pretty much every single match. 43. Well, he's given him chances of winning every single match. But we often see it here at the Super Series. Once you get to Wednesday, the players are settled in. They've had a couple of days play. They're fine-tuned. They're match sharp. 125, Daniel Carr, 125. But what Turner will be aware of is the fact that Johnson has upped it to 98. And if he can just reel off this first and reel in a second, things will get very, very nervy for the man they call the Mutts Nuts. It'd be squeaky bum time for the Mutts Nuts. 95, Darren Yulkar, 68. Way would dart. The Johnson, double eight, great recovery. 52. Martin Martin Turner, the opportunity to wrap this up in style with a 170 finish. Not many games get won with the 170 finish. I can only think of a couple off the top of my 94. head. 94. Daniel Crowley. good players do that. 4 Eight. And that's probably Martin his last chance. 76. That's six starts, Mr. Double. And Martin Turner to seal a 4 0 win. Darren Johnson playing really well. But Game Martin Turner has laid Martin down Turner. a marker for the rest of the field. The man who still half his chances of progressing his way to finals night through Group A gets his campaign off to a perfect start. An average of 92. Darren Johnson was floating around the 95 mark for a lot of that game. But Turner is a victor by four legs to nil. A fantastic opener. What we're going to see from our next one, Peter Manley searching for his first win here at the Super Series. He takes on Andy Jenkins in a battle of two legends next. Hi there, welcome back to the Motor Super Series where a bagel was dished up to Darren Johnson for breakfast as Turner had him on toast. A 4-0 win for Martin Turner in that opening encounter of the morning.
decent performance, a 92.49 average, 104 checkout in there as well. Uh, Darren Johnson missing all six attempts he had at double. And that means that Martin Turner is still well and truly in the hunt to take top spot away from Richie Housen. Uh, if we have a look at the Group A table, you'll see that Turner is now just two points behind the owl, although he does have a game in hand. Housen will take on third place Adam Mould in the match after the one we're about to see, which is a repeat meet between Peter Manley and Andy Jenkins. The pair have played, of course, twice this week already, and Jenkins has come out the victor on each of those occasions, winning 4-1 when they met on Monday, and then 4-1 again when the pair played yesterday. And we can see the end of that match here. Andy Jenkins just uh, enjoying that victory over Peter Manley, smiling before he even hit that double, Andy Jenkins there. Uh, Peter Manley, it's a, a new experience for him, is trying to play himself into some form ahead of the world's seniors. And Henry Deacon chatted to Peter to see what he's made of the experience so far. Peter, day three for yourself here at the Super Series. How would you reflect upon the first couple of days? Um, well, obviously, I'm disappointed with the way I played, but uh, I think people really need to know just how hard this actually is. And because, obviously, for someone like myself who, oh, I don't play, I don't go to tournaments any on a regular basis. And I'm in with a bunch of guys. I thought I was going to be in a bunch of oldies, you know, like myself, that uh, were struggling a little bit and we could have a good little uh, match-up. But, uh, no, I'm, I'm getting better as the day goes on. I feel a little bit better. I wanna, I, I, I've always loved upsetting people in my career and I really would love to upset someone here this week. Of course, as you say, you haven't played much tournament practice, but have you found playing the 10 games over the last two days, you're feeling a bit more sharp and you've kind of found that edge that obviously you haven't had the last couple of years? Um, yeah, you, you do, because you, obviously you've got to concentrate and you've got to do things that you, you were out of your comfort zone in, in recent times. But going back to when you used to play, it, it, I'd have loved it. I would have loved this. Absolutely loved it. And of course, you want to get that first victory day. I suppose it's just, you know, as you said, you want to upset people and there's no better way of upsetting than getting a win. Well, I've got eight legs yesterday. I had two the first day. That equates to two wins. I just need to put them f sort of eight legs together. <laughs> Well, we look forward to watching that. Peter, good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Peter Manley upsetting people. Well, I never. Well, let's see if he can get that first victory today. As I said, he's trying to play himself into form for that World Seniors Championship at the Circus Tavern. Andy Jenkins, though, equally, equally relishing being reacquainted with the former world number one after and after a hat-trick of wins over him. So sit back and enjoy the fun, as described by Henry and Matthew Edgar. Thank you very much, Chris. And one thing we are destined to see is some entertainment over the next 10, 15 minutes or so. Andy Jenkins has actually promised this is going to be the one of the best games we'll ever see. It's going to be better than last night's final. Let's see whether they'll live up to tight. Peter Mann is 6 year from Carlisle, yet to get to win on the board here at the Super Series. But he's eking closer up against Andy Jenkins. Rocky, from a World Championship semi-finalist to... We saw better signs of yesterday after a little bit of a struggle on Monday. But there is an edge to this game, isn't there? There's no doubt about that. Oh, yeah, they've both spoke about it, haven't they? And being a manly saying they'd like to upset somebody, I can guarantee you that person he would like, like to upset to is Andy Jenkins. Game on. I listened to the two go to and fro for about 15 minutes in the practice room this morning. and It was pure entertainment. Wish we'd uh, microphone that one up, but Peter Manley was Edgaring himself there, 100. really, because I, I like doing that. What he did there, where he, he's trying to work it out. He's well, I won eight legs. That's like two games. I'm surprised he's not coming trying to claim four points. 135. Then two on stage. Actually, the quietest the practice room's been all week. 100. Yesterday in game one, Peter Manley shown a lot of signs of improvement and it sort of tailed off as the day went on it's happening again here first six starts look good not just because where they're landing but how they're landing and how they are thrown 26 i shouldn't speak
140. Just double checking and clarifying the score. Obviously, a straight tunnel to the left to finish, but with two in the treble, he might as well have stayed at that target. 45. Andy Lucar, and he's going to get the luxury of time against the Manly Darts. Six and one, two, six. And because of that, it gave him the opportunity to stay upstairs. Fifty-eight. Good opportunity here for Jenkins to break the throw and keep the misery coming in for Peter Manley. In terms of that results and the legs and the 40. wins and the points. And you'll cast sixty-eight. Jenkins will prefer to play tomorrow evening, that we can be sure of. Chance to kick start his day with two points. Fifty two. And there's that luxury of time that you just alluded to allowed him just to use those six darts to set up and now he's managed to pick 18. a double that he's leaving quite Andrew regularly 16. clearly likes this section of the board a good record on double eight game shot on the first leg Andy and Jenkins. Jenkins breaks the throw in the opening leg and it's more of the same unfortunately for Peter Manley did put out on Twitter this morning saying that we are open to discuss like Andy did through first. anything so sending your observations and we'll try and answer as many as we can and i got one tweet from jack who says are we 100. shocked at the manly performance so far and i don't think anyone's really surprised at the the manly performance due to the amount that he plays 43 very very rare very sporadic this sort of four or five months apart from any sort of competitive action and that's only about three or four tournaments that we can pick that he's actually played darts in he actually said that in his interview himself he's not really playing as such but one thing we have seen is a little bit of improvement 60. from day one to two what we see from day two to three i don't know but manly has already started talking we saw it last night and he's already started telling me that he's eyeing up Thursday Seven. when it all starts again, it all starts fresh, and he's three days into the tournament. Well, for Manny, it's, it's getting off the ring rust, isn't it? And 41. it's like a golfer, isn't it? If you, you, could be, you could be Tiger Woods, the best golfer in the world, but if you don't play for as long as Manny hasn't played the best part of seven or eight years at, at, at the top level professionally, to come back into it, you're not, you're not going to hit a hole in one with your first tee shot, are you? So... It is about getting yourself back up to the standard and up to the standard that the senior tour is going to provide. And it is a very, very good 45. one. Yeah, that Seniors World Championship. Last year felt like a bit of a closed event with just a couple of potential winners. This year, there's more and more. But Jenkins has lost his line completely 15. here. His last shots, 7, 26, 15. He has completely lost the line. One out of and Manley's 40. punishing him. How ironic would it have been? One hundred. have completely filled that up, hit a one eighty. That would have just been darts in a nutshell. One thing we have learned though about Peter Manley is you give him and a sniff at the double and he hits it. Forty-five. Peter Lucar, seventy-two. To level this game up. Usually, when he gets a dart at tops, it tends to go. Fifty-two. And but it won't this time. And so Jenkins returns to one fifteen. This is to back the breakup in which he accrued in the last leg with a hold. It's not going to happen, man. He returns. Fifty-nine. Peter for double ten. 20. To bring this game back on foe. To level us back up at one apiece. Fives. Ten. And you are fifty six. This could be a bit of a let off here for Andy Jenkins. Oh, and he's missed the big number. Game shot on the second. Wow, when you Andy talk Jenkins. about let offs, there it is, Andy Jenkins. You have just used every get-out-of-jail-free card in the whole Monopoly board. There is no cards left. The leg Peter to throw first. Game on. Main story, though, is 2-0 up. He sees the funny side of it. 
And normally when that happens, what we tend to do is he comes out in the next leg, Six he eight. opens with a 140, and it's like, what on earth just happened? Sixty-eight. It's the line, isn't it? He's completely losing the line, the fives, the ones. And he's just not really expecting from Jenkins, who had a really good 26. 2022. One on the challenge tour. Had success here. Finished third in a phase back in the previous incarnation in Southampton. Made the champion a champion special, which we had in July. He's been playing some really good stuff and had success on the seniors tour, but Yesterday there were signs. Forty-five. But I think we're still waiting for Rocky to click here. And let's be fair with it. He's doing one hundred and thirty-nine. It's not going to be enough to win the other games. It's enough to win this one. All you can do is win. You know, is there any advantage for winning with a hundred and ten average and winning four and nil, or winning with a seventy-five average and winning four nil? No. You don't get paid for averages, you get paid for wins. And he's on course for that win. Game with a double a break leg. of throw and, and a 1 5 4 finish. Said that you bounce straight back after bad legs like that. That is a 12 dart leg from Andy Jenkins. He got the 140, I predicted. I didn't predict the 1 5 4 out. But this is just. Well, when you have Andy that bad first, leg, there's almost a on. sense of embarrassment. There's also a sense of there's nothing I've got left to lose. I've already had that bad leg. So it just becomes easier from there. And that's what we saw One here with Jenkins, 40. and he's really kicking into action now. Look at his last 12 darts. 140, 139, 154 85. finish, 140. He said that we're going to get a game better than the World Championship final. Just clip those last 12 darts. One out of them 40. Make it 15 darts. Clip those 15 darts, and we'll just go with that. 140. Seeing that side on there of Peter Manley, there's something that's really changed with the Manley throw. It's a lot more stable. When he used to play before, he used to 60. sort of throw himself into the dart a little bit, get a bit of movement in the body. He's much more static and still now, which is being compensated. Well, you can see there, there's that lift in the shoulder. 100, and you can't 161. said to me yesterday that he doesn't know why he's flicking the darts. I think we might have found the answer from that side shot. 65. The weight is just sat too far on the heels. And there's that flick again. The shoulder lifting. 92. And you'll find 96. The late. 80. Peter will find 84. So this to stay in the match. And it'd be so typical of Peter Manley this week to take it when he started bullseye double 17. 67. Have you ever seen the like and of that? 16. Exhibitionist starts with Peter Manley. Andy Jenkins don't believe it. None of us can Game believe it. But it's Jenkins who gets Jenkins. the win by four legs to nil. Peter Manley bought the entertainment. Andy Jenkins takes the points. A four nil victor. Back-to-back -back bagels to begin the day here at the Super Series. Andy Jenkins dishing one out on Peter Manley up the Martin Turner got one the game before. Well, coming up after the break is the top of the table battle as Adam Moll, the ADC qualifier, who is impressed on debut, takes on the man to beat, Richie Housen.
welcome back. Well, I mentioned that in the first match, it was a breakfast bagel served up by Martin Turner to Darren Johnson. Andy Jenkins, I think, added a bit of relish to his as he defeated Peter Manley with a 4-0 victory in the second match of the morning. And Jenkins certainly enjoyed that one. Came off stage saying that has made his day already. A 1-5-4 check out the highlight. Four out of seven on the doubles. Decent stuff from Andy Jenkins, though, like Darren Johnson, Peter Manley missed six attempts at double himself. And it means he remains stranded at the bottom of the Group A table. Uh, no points yet for Manley, uh, but Jenkins just about still fighting to try and make it through to the evening sessions this week. Top three would secure that, and he's only two points behind Adam Mould now. Uh, speaking of which, Adam Mould is about to play the ADC qualifier this week, taking on the league leader, Richie Housen, the pair in previous meetings this week, well, it's gone the way of house and both times. A 4-1 win on Monday and then that 4-2 success on Tuesday. So who will be Wednesday's winner? Well, Richie House has proved to be a tough man for anybody to beat. Just one defeat so far. Let's hear from him now. Richie, well, it's been quite the week so far. How would you analyse it from your perspective? Um, yeah, I'm quite pleased, Henry, to be honest, the way it's gone. Uh, first day, um, I played OK, really happy with it. Yesterday, I, I was a bit under the weather yesterday, and I didn't feel like I played like I could have done. Today, I feel a bit better again, so I've got to get my head on. It's going to be a very tough day today. Uh, everybody's trying to, to get top or first, second or third, so I've just got to try and do a job today. And, of course, being top of the table, you're going to have that mantra of man to be, and I suppose that comes with a little bit of pressure. Oh, 100%. When you're, when you're first starting, first couple of days, you should try and get in the best position. Um, but when you're top, you've actually got something to lose, where the other guys, they've not got anything to lose, so they're going to be in it again if you're not, whoever's not qualified, it's going to be have another chance. But when you're on the top, you're almost there, and it does put the extra pressure on you, definitely. Does that make the first couple, of de uh, first couple of games even more significant? 100%, because I think I've got Adam and Martin first two mm -hmm. games, and they're both second and third behind me, so it's going to be very important, yeah. Wish you all the best. Good luck, Thanks Richie. very much. Thank you. Well, there is no doubt that Richie Housen has been the standout star of this group so far, and victory here would see the Essex Ace take another step towards finals night. However, if Mould can overcome the Owl, then the race is well and truly on. Talking you through every twist and turn are Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, the Owl has been the man of the week so far in the morning sessions at the Super Series, but Adam Mould has been the breakout star, ADC qualifier, on debut, still in with a chance of qualifying, but he has to win this game against Richie Housen, who, if he wins, will re-establish the four-point buffer at the top of the table, and it would be very, very hard for Martin Turner to catch him. But before this game gets underway, I just want to pick up on a point that Chris Murphy made up on the balcony about Andy Jenkins' bagel. Who puts relish on a bagel, Matt? Yeah, I can't say it's my sort of dining or my sort of cuisine to be honest but first leg it's Adam each to their own first. game on Richie Housen could be in a league of his own Saturday night finals night and he could be pretty much ticking Adam Mould off barring 59. a lot of four nils either way we're heading to the point of the week where Matt Edgar's red pen is beginning to run out of ink. Yeah, the red pens when we write down things that are important. And this game is important. Richie Housen, let's say, could get rid of Adam Mould here. A win here would mean that Adam Mould could only reach 20 100. points. So then it would only be leg difference that he could ever really catch Richie Housen on. And to do that, Richie Housen would have to lose all four games. And I've got to mention it including losing to Peter Manley, who's not won a game yet. 60. Is this where I mentioned the phrase, stranger things have happened? We will see just how strange things can possibly get here today. Well, I do fancy Richie Housen to get the job done, win the group. He's looked the best player. He said he felt a little bit under the weather yesterday. We can see that in terms of the dip of performance. He started the day around about the 88 average for the first three games, but when we got to game four, 
we said that he was looking a bit tired, a bit jaded. The darts wasn't going as well, and he dropped the average down to an 81, and 81. in the last game, he just stumbled over the line against Peter Manley. 75 the average, but he got the points, he got the win. And considering that the performance did dip so much, to get eight points out of the possible 85. 10 was a fantastic return for Richie House and just shows that he has that winning mentality. Winning mentality, which has been bred by the world seniors. Initially qualifying for the 41. first world championship. The car 116. And look at what he's finished. We've seen this a few times from Richie this week. We've seen this a few times. Are we going to see it again? In you bet your bottom dollar we will. Can't speak. 116 again for Richie. That's four times. Four times he's took Sound out like the 116. Game on. I think we now need to get it on his shirt, which, once again, he's got his Aston Villa colours on again today, Richie. It was his Aston Villa shirt the other day that he was wearing when he found his best stuff. Maybe when he's wearing his homage to his favourite football team, it gives him a bit of extra inspiration. He's wearing the Aston Villa shirt. Will he be here on Saturday evening? <laughs> 85. I wonder if Robert Rickwood's somewhere watching this thinking, how is Wayne Mardle now the I can't speak 16. guy? Because he's been the I can't speak guy for years. Literally, last time he was here, I was, <laughs> I was up on press and he said a joke five 81. seconds before going on air. And then, literally, as the director by ear went 3 2 1, he's gone, I can't speak. I don't know how I held it together. It's the way he says it that just makes you laugh 57. so hard. Yeah, he's a great guy. Remember uh, when he was in Southampton? I mean, he's, he's a bit tight. You know, he's a bit tight. Just a little. And they tried to charge him a pound to put batter on his fish. I've never heard the like. Ninety-four. I think every week should have Robert Rickwood on it. Every week. Just for the comedy value. Is that just me because I can't pronounce his name properly? <laughs> Ninety-seven. Richie Ricardo. I am 150. learning. One fifty for House and for a two 0 lead. Three balls. The the Simon Whitlock, that one has been dubbed. The one sixteen's now dubbed the House and eighty four. Playing so much better today, isn't he? He's looking so much more likely. The dance sitting in the board, Richard nice. 66. Got that spring back in the step. 16. For a Game double lead. Second leg. Richard this is when Housen is at his absolute best, when he's playing in full swing. You just expect him to hit every single double on the board. He's one of the best finishers I have seen, certainly in the Super Series. So I got him to throw first. Continuing that off. again here. Two from two. 116, the 66. This is, this is good quality darts here from Richie. 45. Fan of that route for the 66? It's not the most logical, but I do it myself. Um, and if someone was to put the maths in front of you and the percentages and say... It's probably the worst way to go, but 100. absolutely, I do exactly the same. Here we see the overhead shot of Adam Mole's darts as they enter the board. One hundred and thirty. And as you can see, there's a bulbous barrel, but his darts stand up to attention. Whereas you'll see Richie House on here as the first dart goes in, just sits down slightly, and that gives him the opportunity to stack. And the opportunity to hit the max. One hundred and thirty. Spoke a lot in this game about Richie Housen, but Adam Moulds had a great week so far. ADC qualifier. Some really good moments. He's still in contention to win this group, but he will have to beat Richie Housen if he wants to keep that going. 
And every leg that Richie Housen ticks off is just really shortening the chances of Adam Mould. 134. And Adam Mould here leaving 52 after 12. 88 average, and he's yet to have a dart at double. He's going to get a couple, but judging by the way Housen's scoring here, that might be the only chance he gets. He's himself on a double after 12. So this 52 for Mould has to go. Double 16. Game shot it on does the go. Leg. No Adam mistake. Mould. And Mould keeps himself in the game. And despite the brilliance of Housen, now it's a little bit of a tap on the shoulder finish there to say, I'm still in this game. I'm going to carve out opportunity. And when they come, game I will on. take them. Not a dark missed at double yet in this game. It's 2-1 to Housen. I think that message has been sent loud and clear from Adam Mould, not just in that situation of the 52 finish, but this week. 100. Monday and Tuesday, really, really good. And just, he's there to take every opportunity. And he has taken every opportunity. It's a slow start getting into this one. Went 2-0 down. Not really playing like we've seen for the past couple of days. But now he's starting to find that form. The averages rose over the 90 mark. Richie Housen knocking on the door of the 100. 81. This is a quality affair for the first round of fixtures. And you sort of feel as well for Martin Turner, he's probably going to be a bit of an Adam Mould fan as well. 80. Let's have a look at the scoring power pack because the reason why House is being afforded more opportunities at the finishing is, is here. It's in the 140 plus stakes where House has four in that category, if you include the maxims, whereas Mould is five 85. to four in the ton stakes, but hasn't got anything above that. However, most of this is coming in these last couple of legs for Adam Mould. The first two legs, he didn't really have any ticks in any boxes. And he's warming into this game nicely. 64. This one got a bit more mileage to it yet. 56. And them's the opportunities when you're against the throw where you just need to find a couple of trebles. Now he's got to hope that house and doesn't hit. It goes out of your own hands and goes into hope. You stand at the back of the stage 59. wanting. And I would normally say it's got away with it. However, we know what Richie Housen's like on the finishers. He's already took a tumpless finish in this game. Took a tumpless finish in every game bar one, I believe, so far. Out of the 10 matches he's okay. played. Richie Ricard won. Which is ridiculous. We can make it 11 if you include this one now. I'm going to back him against another here. 60. And perhaps Adam this Ricard is the third time we've seen this week. Adam Mould just blink in a big moment because whenever there's been an opportunity to be had, by and large, he has ran through that 60. door, but Richie not on this occasion, 60. and it's given House and the opportunity to extend that lead to 3-1. 61. Well, it appears that Richie House might be human after all. Couple of missed darts there at the double. But that is a wayward dart from Adam Mould. He only needed to stay straight to get himself 36. at the dart, the Richie double. He went aggressive, 20. hunted down the treble. And now he's offered Richie House and the chance to move himself one leg away from the match. Next to slide it along. Too far along. And so up for five. 15. But he brings Adam it inside. And so this is Mould's chance. He's been gift wrapped to this opportunity. Game shot on the fourth flag. And Adam he Mould. says thank you very much. It looked as if a couple of visits ago, Mould missed a trick. But Housen gave him a second chance, a second opportunity. He wasn't going to let that pass him by. First. Game on. And so Mould brings this game back on throw. Back level at two apiece. And is starting the fifth. Well, impeccably. Superbly. Okay. Perfectly.
100. And he's getting better, but he has to run for cover. 79. That's mightily unlucky. And if that first start of that previous visit there just entered the board a bit more cleanly, we might have been on for the nine. Just has a look at the scoreboard. 83. Moved across for the 18s, but by hitting the travel one, has left himself on the 159. The purgatory, the purgatory number, the purgatory score. 41. It's a complete drama-free error, though, really. When you look at the scoreboard, Richie Housen back on 361. Even a 180 would have left him 181. So it was a drama-free miss, really, for Adam Mould. It was a perfect timing if you're going to slip something up. And he could be turning this one around. Richie Housen 2-0 up. Looked like he was going to run away with this one. Adam Mould didn't really start 60. the day. Adam Yorkar, 72. Now... He's absolutely firing. Richie Housen is sliding. Adam Mould is growling. 52. He's 20 points away from winning. Or being in the lead, should I say. 52. But he's not going to get a second's rest. 135. Adam Mould keeps himself interested. Double five. That was the worst possible first time. That's the best legs. possible Adam second. Old. And Richie Housen came charging out of this game like a greyhound from the traps. Adam Mould has just kept himself interested and kept Six himself five, interested. Game on. And now we have a right old switcheroo here as Mould leads 3 2. Housen throwing to stay in the match. And Mould may have caught the owl napping. 60. I can't believe he stayed up there. That dart was laying down. He, it was 20 points that he could have potentially knocked out the board. And right now he needs all the points he can get because Adam Mould is firing. One that is the third 180 of this match. Two for Adam Mould, one for Richie Housen. Mould has just become strong favourite to win this game. But. 125. Housen going to try to chase him in. Housen's next game is against Martin Turner. The other player that is chasing him down at the top of the table. 70. Be intriguing to know what Mould's average from leg three onwards is. One hundred. Oh, why Henry gets. The shoes and socks off, the fingers and toes to work that one out. Let's see if Adam Mould can get over the line. Or if Richie Houghton is going to take us all the way 18. to a deciding leg. The sort of game that I feel deserves to go all the way. The sort of game I want to see go all the way. See so if you can hold it together. He's left it again. The Houghton. The 116. It's going to be under pressure. 91 left for, for Mouldy. 97. Richie O'Carr, 116. Surely not. Surely not again. Dark Chavu. Tops for the second time in this game. 96. Adam O'Carr, 74. And now Mould comes back for 74 to seal the deal, to seal the win. And so one dart at tops, 54. drags below, and Housen returns 20. to 20. Housen was just stood watching, hoping that the mould through for tops. These look ropey. 10. Never felt likely. Adam Yorkar, 20. Had the mould for the match. Good lie, good marker. Game shot Uses it well, Adam bounces Mould. in off the dart and condemns Richie Housen to his second defeat so far this week. And that 
has just opened up Group A a little bit. It's kept Moldy Adam Mould in the hunt. And also Martin Turner will be a very interested bystander to that result. The group is still alive, wide open with three people battling it out. Coming up next, Darren Johnson will be hoping to book his place in Group B. Takes on Peter Manley, who is going to be looking for his first victory of the week so far. Well, things have just taken an interesting turn here at the Modus Super Series because Richie Housen, the, up to this point, runaway league leader, has just been beaten. A 4-2 success for Adam Mould, the ADC qualifier, this week. Uh, an 83 average across the board in that one, but Mould turned that game around. He was 2-0 down in it, and it means... Uh, the race is well and truly on for top spot. Richie Housen remains just a couple of points clear of Martin Turner when all of them have played 11 matches. Mould maybe has put himself in the hunt as well with that one, and it's a bigger gap to the bottom three as well. So it's starting to take shape in terms of who will be playing in which groups this week, but it might not be certain that Housen is going to qualify for finals night. On to game four then now, and it's Darren Johnson against Peter Manley. Both players suffered heavy defeats in their opening matches, both beaten 4-0, but Johnson has beaten Manley in both of their meetings this week. A whitewash win for him when they met on Monday. Manley did get a leg in the meeting yesterday, but Johnson completed a 4-1 success. So the question will be asked again. I suppose. Can Manley get off the mark? Can he do it by beating DJ? Well, the men with all the answers are Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar. You shouldn't say I have all the answers when you mention the word DJ, but thank you very much indeed, Murph. Much improved opening performance by Darren Johnson. He averaged 89 and lost 4-0 to Martin Turner. He takes on Peter Manley here, who is still searching for that first victory. And for Darren, he'll be looking at putting in the performances that will give him confidence going into tomorrow's session, most likely in Group C. And if he plays to that level, 
and he's going to play himself into form, and he's going to make himself a very big contender going into that six-man group. If you're looking at a game that Darren Johnson plays himself into form, he should have already done that. The game he played himself into form should have been that last one. The game he got confidence from should be that last one. It was a good performance. He First had like six Darren's starts at the double. First. Missed all of them, obviously, because he lost 4-0. But Martin Turner was exceptional in that game. He put a really good performance in. And Darren Johnson, much, much better in the action, looked more likely, looked confident on the 59. scoring, was switching around the board well. There were so, so many positives for Darren Johnson to take from that last game. Well, we're most 45. likely going to see these two meet another two more times this week after this. They're going to... Be playing in Group C on Thursday and Friday, it looks like. Well, Peter Manning definitely will. 96. They're going to be joined by Mike Huntley, Steve Perrin and Alan Norris. Whilst in Group B, we've got some legends of the game. The reigning World Seniors Pretty Champion, nice. the UK Open Champ, the World Grand Prix Champ, World Masters Champ, Robert Thornton will be entering the fray as well as the 10 times women's world champion. The golden girl herself, Trina Gulliver, will be on the hockey alongside Ian Moss. We're looking forward to watching them in action. Group B is Thursdays and Fridays at 10 p.m. on Sporty Stuff TV and the Motor Super Series YouTube channel. Group C will be in this slot tomorrow and Friday. Saturday night's final, 10 o'clock on Sporty Stuff TV and the Motor Super Series YouTube channel, which if you are tuning in to us from, very good morning to you. And don't forget to send us a subscribe because on top of the live Thank coverage, you. we'll be bringing you bonus behind-the-scenes content, including highlights, interviews, and you never know, maybe the odd bit here and there from us here in the commentary box. Darren Johnson looking to leave tops after 15, a solid opening leg, which just continues to his moniker of the day of just rock solid and steady altogether. 96, Darren, you require 40. No score. Peter Ricard, well, the start 99. was well thrown dart from Darren Johnson, but he wasn't able to find the target. Peter Manley, 99. Going to need to find a treble, as he does with his opening dart. At least 42. So he's just come away from his preferred tops. 81. Was a Daniel good effort there from 40. Peter Manley. Can Darren Johnson get this one done with... Out any more drama. He has not hit a double yet today. He's on the first leg. All Darren records Johnson. are there to be broken, and he breaks that one and takes the lead. He was mentioning there all the different ways that people might be watching us. You you miss one way that Frank people Mike might Peter be watching us, and that is those on. tables and chairs that are behind the players right now. You can literally sit in this arena, in this venue with us, and watch the darts. That will be on Saturday night. You can head over to dartshop.tv and get your free tickets. You could be sat on those benches, those tables and chairs in behind there, watching the action and seeing who gets that £5,000 on Saturday night. Now, is any more incentive to be here means you wouldn't have to listen to us two in commentary. Oh, I'm sure the mute button's doing wonders. Excellent leg, this from both. 100. said yesterday I felt that 85. Darren Johnson could make a move, that Darren Johnson could be the player that starts to show his levels. Has he just started to show it a day later than expected? That is the case. We are watching a contender okay. here for that Group C a title that will start tomorrow and Friday. That's assuming he doesn't make Group B. But with the Adam Mould win, it looks 65. more and more unlikely. And Darren Johnson openly admitted himself when we spoke to him on Monday morning that he wasn't playing his best game in the minute, but 57. playing Peter in this competition gives you the chance to play yourself into form. And I think that is what we're seeing here from Johnson. Winner on tour. Oh, my. Could you imagine if Manley got the fish? Got your car, 164. I think we'd hear about it all the way through to Sunday. And he's not even going to be here on Sunday. Bullseye. 139, Peter Carr, 65. Great effort there from Darren Johnson. Just touched the wire. 
I wouldn't be surprised to see Mandigo Bull here, you know. 45, Darren Newcastle. Slipped 25. in the 15, left 50. You were contemplating it. Double four, though, to break the throw. Two twos for two. Team shot on the second leg. Darren Johnson. Towards the lead, breaks the throw. Halfway to victory. He still looks a little bit unhappy with his game at the moment. You can see that by his face. It's written all over it. But this is looking better. Like it's just that back end of the legs, Schemo. isn't it? There's certainly the front six, front nine. Darren Johnson seems to have got that mopped up. As we're getting more and more casing evidence to that point. What as he fires in his first it? maximum of the match. First maximum of the day. He didn't get one in his 4-0 defeat to Martin Turner in the opening game. Forty-three. Thirty. I think it's fair to say, and this is not about any disrespect to Peter, but if you can kick off a leg with a big score, you've given yourself a huge advantage at the minute. When you just look at the way Peter's scoring, the, the tons are coming in clusters, the ton 40s are coming in clusters. That's just the one area he's just got to Sharpen up on because actually when he does get to the finishes, he's been quite prolific. Seventy-two. Yeah, I do feel that we are going to see this come together a bit more for Manly over Thursday and Friday. He's, he knows that today there's not really much in there for oh. him, other than getting the reps in, and reps is what he needs. Done your car, sixty-six. 3-0. 26. Also a 15 data. Got plenty of time. Got an extra zero knocked off of his score. 44. Daniel 40 plays 400. 40. The doubles have been a bit of a problem for him, leg. but he had plenty Daniel of time Johnson. in that one. Gets over the line. And again, you can see that frustration, three from 12. He wants to be a bit better than that, and he has been better than that recently, the recent Northern Ireland oh, Open champion, first, Darren Johnson. One leg away from a couple of points. One leg away from keeping Manly firmly at the bottom 85. of that table. 85. It'd be a double bagel for Manly. I've actually just had a text 100. from Chris Murphy. And it is an image of a breakfast bagel with Barry Malo original relish. 60. So apparently you can put a relish on a bagel. You can also put mustard in there. I mean, I wouldn't put mustard in a bagel. 140. Speaking of relish, that's what Darren Johnson is doing here. He's relishing the opportunity. You get some points on the board here. 41. He has broken the throw in terms of the scoring phase. He's got three darts in his hand here to extend this. And treble here will move him to a finish. Time is running out for Mr. Manley. Ninety-nine. Ninety-five. Oh, Johnson first to a finish. Manly throwing first means he can get himself down to one as well. Sixty. It's a Darren much, Newcastle much bigger rescue. You'd probably think from here Darren Johnson's got at least six. He has thrown darts at the doubles like he's going to need all of them. Sixty-eight points to go. Fifty-eight. P2 car, 156. He's should get two darts at a double for the two points. 30. Daniel Carr, 48. Match points. 
Game shot better the match. Darren from Darren Johnson. Johnson in all rounds there. Better on the finish, better in the performance. We've been waiting for Darren Johnson to show up, and that looked a lot more clinical, a lot more assured. Is this the start of Darren Johnson's week? Well, it's two points in order to put him onto that. But two players at the top who have been on it all week, Richie Housen and Martin Turner, will be first versus second in our next match. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. reminder as well that you can be here on Saturday night tickets available for Super Saturday at the Super Series from dartshop.tv and they are absolutely free of charge so head there and head here to Portsmouth at the Live Lounge to join the action on Saturday now it was looking likely that Richie Housen would be there but he was beaten a couple of games ago it's looking unlikely that Peter Manley will be there he's just been beaten in this game 4-0 by Darren Johnson only one one leg against Johnson in their three meetings and only had two darts at double in that one today. So Manley remaining legless so far on Wednesday morning here at the Super Series. Uh, and in the league table, he still has no points and he's stuck at the bottom of it. The next game now is going to take on a huge significance. Richie Houston and Martin Turner are going to play. And as you can see, if Turner wins it, he can go level on points with House, and that wasn't looking likely for much of the week. And the pair have beaten each other once each so far in meetings this week. Uh, Housen got the victory on Monday when he went through the field winning all five games, but Martin Turner got his revenge yesterday. Despite Housen taking out one of a, a plethora of ton plus checkouts, he took out this 105 to level the match at one apiece. But Turner 
went on to get the win by a two-leg margin, winning the game 4-2. And with Housen losing his first match of the morning, as I was saying, this game has just got a bit of extra spice. Actually, if Turner were to win it 4-0, he could go ahead of him on leg difference as well and actually sit in P1 at the end of this game. So it is a top of the table tungsten tussle between the owl and the mutts nuts you have to love that nickname don't you so i better hand you back to prime time matthew edgar and a man who well if i were to say his nickname would be taken off air henry deacon i can't speak thank you man I literally can't speak. Anyway, big top of the table tussle there. This really could be the group for Richie Housen. Wins here. Even though there's still three more rounds to play, you'd say he's as good as through. Martin Turner, as you mentioned in the intro, can make things very, very interesting. And there was a point yesterday where we thought Richie Housen was as good a bet as into Saturday night's final. Well, it's not quite as simple a task now. That opening defeat to Adam Bold. Really has opened up the window of opportunity here for Martin Turner. I'll tell you one thing we will get. We'll get some big scores in this one. It'll first be all about whether through first. Turner can perhaps provide the big finishes Game because Housen already today has hit a 116, threatened another. And in fairness, it was the highest quality game of the day, that one between Housen and Mould. The big question in this one is how can Housen react to the setback that he has received? In his last 100. two games, we'll ignore the Peter Manley game because everyone's beaten Peter Manley. If we look at his last two games, he's lost to Martin Turner, he's lost 100. to Adam Mould. How does he react to those setbacks? He was having it all his own way day one, he was having it all his own way at the start of day two. Can he bounce back? Can he show resilience? 81. Or is Martin Turner going to open this group wide open? 63. Turner did say in the interview when he caught me at the start of the day that he's planning on winning all five. Obviously, that's the plan for all the players at the start of the day. But when Martin Turner said it, you sort of got that little bit of belief that he actually meant it. That that would actually believe that he could go ahead and 41. do that this time. Where... Sometimes you hear a player say it and you think you're just saying the right things. You, you don't actually believe what you're saying here. With Martin, you've got that vibe that he could quite well win this group. Well, Martin thinks he's going to be turntable turner today at the Super Series. Travis, what was a four-point gap at the top of the table to Richie Housen at the earliest possible juncture? But Housen, importantly, has the darts. Gets himself on a finish after 12. 98. But Turner is going to stick with him at every single point of this match. Well, I've already seen a 116 from Housen today. We are not going to see the 139 go. One hundred would have left him without a top. The bullseye there leads him double eight after 15. And so this 140 has to go. It doesn't go. It's a Housen first poke, first chance for a 1-0 lead. 60, Richie Ocar, 16. Has he got his doubling shoes back on again? 8. No. Martin, you require 80. And again, didn't really look too likely. The darts going in at different sort of angles and entry points. Martin Turner has just gifted an opportunity here for Richie Housen. Missing the big 20. 40. Richie will require 8. Has Housen got away with one? Can he make the most of his second opportunity? Game shot on the first leg. Richie Housen. And Halford. he gets there in the end. A little bit ropey at times. Kind of been the theme since the midway through day two for Richie Housen. Is the pressure... Second Get into him. To first. Game on. Does he really want these couple of days off? Of course he wants a couple of days off. Who doesn't want a couple of days off? He wants to sit 16. back and watch everybody else battle it out, knowing that he is through 
to Saturday night's final. And Martin Turner will know he's missed an opportunity there. Should have had a dart at tops. 100. Didn't get a go. And so Hansen takes full advantage. And it's going to be those minute moments, those minute opportunities that's going to swing it. 60. That last start there from Richie Housen is another good thing about these smaller flights because if you have the, the bigger size flights when he's getting that first start high there, you would never have been able to get that through because the 96. flight would have blocked it. But switching there for Housen, he doesn't want to be above the treble, certainly as high as he is. These are edgy darts from Richie. 140. And the angle eventually that first start on the double four was quite plumb for him because it, the way he likes to stack the darts just gave him that opportunity just to plonk one across and use that as a lovely guide. 60. How heavy is the weight of expectation? 100. He's weighing down quite heavy here on Richie House on day one. Who's going to win? We don't really know. We had a couple of runners and then after that Richie House went to being big favourite. One hundred and forty. Is that Matthew weight of expectation really pulling down on that shoulder right now? Missed double twelve in the first game for one for one. One hundred and nine. Richie Ricard, one hundred and five. He's himself on thirty two, and so this time Housen has to get a ton plus finish. He won't. So Turner returns to thirty two. Seventy three. I'll tell you what, Matthew his Ricard, bullseye hitting this week has been absolutely impeccable. Whether it's a finish off a leg. To set up a finish, or to help his Enjoy way along the combination leg, finish. Martin but Martin Turner's double sixteen hitting has just been just has just been just as fruitful. Easy for you to say. But it like reminds you just, every time you get that ball, it just reminds you of Andy Jenkins's face, don't it, on day one when he took out that one three two and then he hit the the bullseye for the eighty one the shot after. But when he hit that ball, ball, he just forty. Remember just coming round to see the face of Andy Jenkins peering behind him like an owl, like a meerkat. 100. Don't compare the meerkat. Look, I'm still surprised we have not had the Andy Jenkins, Richie House and GIF. Where's 95. the GIF, guys? Maybe we'll get it clipped up on social media or the ad. It'd be a perfect meme. It'd be a perfect meme. I know you're a man of that sort of social media usage. Yeah, I think it just happened at the wrong time because all the content creators was a bit too busy with Gerwin Price's headphones at that point to grab the Andy Jenkins meerkat. 99. But this is much better from Richie Housen. Getting his scoring boots back on. One hundred and forty. The, the brown ones that he decided to wear on Monday when he was firing in. Got the brown ones on now. Ninety-nine. Remember, there's an expression: brown shoes never lose. Did lose his opening game to Adam Mould, though. So, is it brown shoes always lose? Twenty-six. Richie Ricard, sixty-eight. Time is on his hand. 26 from Martin Turner just gives Richie the breathing 52. room. Will return. 16. But this time, he's not going to have breathing room. This time, Martin Richie Turner is on his back. Loves this area of the board. 4, big dart. Eight. Big dart. Martin and Turner has a break 76. chance. This 76 to move himself 2 1 up, and they need to have a throw for a two leg buffer. One dart. 56. Drags low. Richie, you require eight. And so Housen gets the second opportunity on the double four. It's clattered off the first. Game shot on the third but he doesn't line. need Richie asking Hansen. twice to take a chance. Leads 2-1. Turner's missed a dart for the break. 
just to unlock the mind of Martin well, Turner like Martin right now, he first. will be disappointed because he would have been aware that Richie Housen, you can see from his body language, Richie Housen is not 100% at it in this game. He will then see Richie Housen missing darts at double. And then when it comes down to the very, very last dart, you think, I'm going to get a chance here. I'm coming back with three darts in my hand to break the throw. And he hits it, Six last eight. dart in hand. That would have been a moment of disappointment there for Martin Turner because the expectation was just starting to build for the opportunity. 96. However, if the game continues in this vein, you've got to think that opportunity will represent itself. In fairness, the scoring phase of Richie Housen hasn't been too bad. It's been, the it's been the doubles that have been the trouble for him. In his first game against Adam Mould, he was 2 from 11. In this one here, as you can see now, he's 2 from 12. 58. He's already missed more darts at double in this game than he did in that opener against Mould. Because scoring-wise, if you have a look at the power pack... 100. He's been steady. Oh, more than so. When you think there's only three legs been played so far, three, one, four, uh, four, one, four, is four tons. It's a nice, happy return. He's outscoring Martin Turner in this one, despite the fact Turner's thrown three more darts. Is this the moment Richie Housen gets back on the horse? One hundred and forty. Great last dart there. Really set that one up nicely. Martin Turner is all of a sudden gone from being in a position where he could pounce and take the lead to being absolutely on 43. the ropes. Richie McLaren, 61. Having windmills thrown at him. Got to go 15 there. So he gets himself a double 16. That just sneaked into the single. He's going to come back. But under how much pressure? 44. Richie Not much. And so Housen returns to a 3 1 lead. Had a dart against him to go 2 1 down. Game and he hasn't looked Richie back Housen. since. Obtains the break. Throws for the match. Leads 3 1. And you sense this is effectively the group in his hands. Looks like Richie did throw first. Game on. With Manly left to play. And that's about disrespect to one dart. A four-point cushion with three games left to play. Just get the feeling we'll probably be insurmountable for Martin Turner. 60. Especially considering that Martin Turner and Adam Mould in positions two and three are still yet to play each other. A long way before they do play each other. That game will be coming around about one o'clock. Forty-five. It could all be pretty much done by then. Richie Housen. Steaming now towards the finishing line. Looks to be getting the results that he desires. He hasn't done it in the blistering form that he did on Monday. But wins are wins. They only pay winners 16. in this game. They don't get paid for averages. And Chris Mason always says they don't put averages on trophies. Forty-two. One twenty after twelve for Housen. He won that three o two. Should have started on the eighteens. Forty-two. Richie McLaren one hundred and twenty. One twenty for the match. For four one win. And to put him in pole position. One dart. Game to finish yet match. another match with a ton topping finish. And Richie Housen is the man at the top of the group. And he is oh so almost there. A 4-1 win against his nearest rival, Martin Turner. And how big was that first leg when Turner had a dart at tops?
to open up a 2-1 lead. He would have then been throwing for 3-1. Richie Hansen then took advantage of his opportunities and then dominated the match from there on in. He gets himself onto the magical 20-point mark. We're going to take a short break. Matthew Edgar's going to race his way up to the balcony for a conversation with Chris Murphy. And then after that, we're going to see Andy Jenkins in action against Adam Mould. Welcome back. It's time for Edgar's analysis. Matthew Edgar joining me to discuss what's happened so far. Um, simple question, really. Has Richie Housen just won the group? Nearly. It, it's close now, isn't it? Martin Turner's performance certainly dipped in that game. Richie Housen's not been likely. I do think, though, when we look at that game with Peter Manley, we, we're writing him off. You know, I think everyone has now. If we look ahead, we can pretty much give Richie Housen another two points on the table there. That will move him up to 22. Martin Turner can only get to 22 now, and the leg difference is massively in Richie Housen's favour. He's, he's done it, hasn't he? He's through to Saturday. Yeah, let's have a look at the table there. So four points clear of Martin Turner. And it could have been different, couldn't it? Huge game for Turner that he could have been level had he won that match. It just shows when we get to this stage of the group how quickly things can change. And how one moment can turn a whole group or turn a whole day or turn a whole match. Just catch your mind back in that match. I believe it was one all at the time. Richie Housen had that dart at the double. He had one dart left in hand at double two. He was chasing it round. He missed about seven darts. Martin Turner had left himself double ten to come back. And he took that double two. Then he kicked on from that point, won the next two legs. Had he missed that, Turner goes 2-1 up, we a break a throw. It could all be different, not just for that match, but for the entire group. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's focus on the next match then. Andy Jenkins and Adam Mould about to play each other. Both have won their opening games today and both have a win against each other this week. Uh, Mould getting victory yesterday and he seems to be performing better and better every day. He's been consistent, hasn't he? And every time I'm here, I say what wins the Super Series is consistency. And Adam Mould has shown a good level of consistency with brilliance at times as well. He's very, very good on the outer ring. Very composed. It doesn't matter what the situation is. He doesn't f go up and down throughout the game. He's got a good base level. Been really impressed with Adam. Are you expecting the table to stay, maybe not in the same order, but the same players going into the groups that it looks like they are at the moment? So Mould and Turner into Group B. 
unless something massive happens, it's going to be that. You know, something's going to have to happen quite silly, like a lot of 4 nils in one way. We've seen a lot of 4 nils today, some of these games. So it can happen. Is it going to? I don't think so. A quick look back at yesterday's match between this pair then. Uh, Andy Jenkins produced a, a nice 120 checkout, but was already 3 nil down at the time. And this is kind of indicative of what we just said about Adam Mode. Lost to Jenkins on Monday, but then produced a, a very good display against him yesterday. Yeah, nothing really seems to phase him, does it, in terms of, like I say, reacting to the game. It would be quite easy as well, looking at Andy Jenkins' performance, for him to start reacting to the games in a negative, because he's thrown well. His darts are right on the wire. He's really close. It's just not going in for him. And you can see with some of these 60s how tightly packed it is, and that's where you just need that experience to say it's going to start going the other side of the wire soon and not to read into the short-term form. Right, we'll let Matthew get back down to join Henry Deacon in commentary to guide you through match six. Thank you very much, Chris. As you mentioned, Adam Mould has had a fantastic debut campaign here at the Super Series. If he can get a victory here against Martin uh, against Addy Jenkins, he'll go above Martin Turner in the table and into second position. He takes on Andy Jenkins, Rocky, who kicked off his campaign with a 4-0 victory against Peter One Dark Manny. So he's looking to go two from two and if Jenkins can actually get a win in this one it would actually make the race of third place quite interesting because Jenkins would find himself on 12 just two points behind Mould so a lot to play for still in this game for both players First if Mould like can get a win he goes first. tied with Turner above Turner from the table what we're going to see here as Rocky and Mouldy enter the hockey and Matthew Edgar enters the commentary box 140 yeah was talking about the group table and the league table and saying, can we see positions changing? If they are going to change, this is the only time it can. If, and, if Adam Mould gets this and goes to 16 points, then it's pretty much positions sorted. Group B, Group C. Obviously, our group winner would be Richie Housen. One thing this group has thrown up for us, though, is the lack of Edgar's top tips. There's not really been much I've been able to come out here and say there's some value there or have a look at this one. I've been very cautious with this one. Adam Mould, really the only player for me that's shown that sort of level of consistency where you can say, here's an opportunity for us to get involved. 100. Obviously, we've got Peter Manley results, but the only way you can really get involved in those is by those heavy score lines. 98. I don't think that he'd be too confident taking those because he can pull it together for four visits, five visits, and win legs like he has. What do you win eight legs so far this 41, week? 41, Andy Ucar, 100. Some start this, but both. Both want to finish after 12. Jenkins looking for tops, tops. Mole's going to return Adam for the 155. I'm going to go to Jenks for the hold, wants tops. 97, and you are 40. And Tops He's is exactly what play. he finds. Andy Jenkins. Jenkins leads 1-0. Well, the only thing you would say in this group changing situation is the legs difference like column. Adam, Adam Mould currently has a legs difference of plus 12. Andy Jenkins minus 3. So Jenkins is going to pit ball to the post in the third place position. He doesn't just have to win this game. You get the sense it's got to be a heavy victory as well. But playing in the mood that he what is, he has got every eight. single chance as our legendary referee, Paul Hinks, bellows out the 180 call. 100. I was just watching Andy Jenkins after he won that leg and he's walking down 58. the back of the stage and the faces that he's pulling. I just think somewhere there's probably a WhatsApp group which involves Andy Jenkins where someone's clipping up a video of all the different faces that he pulled, putting it to some sort of song somewhere. I would like to see that video if it does exist. The many faces of Jenkins. Adam Ucar, 164. It sounds like an exhibition. It's not going any further on that. <laughs> 60. 
This is what I was saying upstairs about Adam Mould that I like. He's just lost that opening leg and then he just carries on in the same vein. Good reaction. 140, Adam Yoka 104. Doesn't ride the wave of the game. He just completely detaches himself on that and just focuses on his own performance. That performance 56. might not be good Adam enough Yoka in this one. 65. Jenkins 65 for 2 0 and a breaker throw. Twenty-five. And he's himself tops. Game shot on this and tops leg. again for a two-nil lead. Averaging just under ninety-seven. This is the best we've seen Rocky throw on the hockey this week. And Adam Mole just underneath ninety, like but he's first. not getting a look Game in on. so far. The scoring prowess of Andy Jenkins is there to see. And then when it comes to the doubles, sixty-six percent. What did I just say to? 100. Chris Murphy about Andy Jenkins. I said he is throwing good darts. It is just not landing in at the moment. All the darts around the wire. I said it has to change at some point. And with the 60. experience that Jenkins got, he will know that situation. And now they're just starting to go on the other side of the wire, which is obviously getting those bigger scores. It's giving 45. him the average that's up at the 97 mark at the moment for this match. And that is just a little tip to everybody else as well. Don't let that short term short sightedness of the sixty feel like a bad shot. If they're all on the wire, at some point it's gotta go in for you. It's a game of small margins. One hundred and forty. Andy Jenkins is becoming a master of those margins in this one. Ninety six. Forty-five. That single five means he can't leave a finish, and so Mould may finally get an opp opportunity, may finally get an opening. Ninety-five. Find is a what? Finds a way to squeeze that final treble in. That was a. Uh... Aggressive dart there from Jenkins. When you talk about squeezing in, he had to put so much more zip and power into that dart and found the treble. And then the 17s as well to leave tops. 90. And you cannot rattle Adam Mould. He's not going to react to what you're doing. Game shot on the but the scoreboard is going to react to what Andy Jenkins is doing. Because despite the near 92 average of Adam Mould, he finds himself 3 0 down to Andy Jenkins who will Off no doubt to want first. to play on. in Group B. He will prefer the Thursday and Friday night. He'll also prefer the mathematical advantage as well. Give himself that big opportunity 60. of getting through to Saturday where I'll be fairly confident Andy Jenkins is going to pack this place out. Well, this has been a game about tops. Adam Mould missing one there to bring it back to 2-1. Jenkins taking advantage on that double, which he hit in the two legs prior, and that's 58. why he is on top. And could well be a leg away from crossing that finishing line. 45. And you have to say, it's up there with the performances of the week thus far. And a mould of dropped a dart there. He may be thinking the only way to take Andy Jenkins out is to see, is to see whether he can hit himself, hit him with the dart. 60. Fortunately for Adam, he missed that one as well. Like he missed his one dart a double so far in this one. This has all been about Andy Jenkins. 85. Comfortably in the lead, 3-0. Three, 3 from 4 on the doubles, averaging around 95. This is the best we've seen from Jenkins so far in terms of the hits. 140. But I did say he's the sort of player that the way he's playing and the way his darts was landing... I was thinking, 19 would be the preferred option for me here. The 132, a much better finish than 131. 105. Pops for the ball. See, the 19, you still get the treble option, you see, for the 137. I think the 19's a much better play there. 100. And you've got 126. This is for the match. 66. Adam Yoka, 83. 
and he may get other opportunities at tops if Moore cannot convert the double 16. He doesn't. He slides the and other side. And so Jenkins now will only get one. He has missed the big number. What's it Rod Harrington says? Don't miss the big number. Tops. Jenkins has been so good on this double. Okay. But it doesn't come 18. to his aid this time. Game shot on the four flag. Up First time of asking. No mistake for Mould. So Jenkins now throws for the match, throws a four and win. First game on. That leg would have really been for a player of Andy's One experience. He knows that was a bonus opportunity, a bonus leg when you're trying to do it on the other player's throw. He would have been eyeing this one up for sure, and he opens it with a 140. 60. Treble is visit for Adam, and he is in big trouble now. Even bigger trouble. Even bigger -er trouble. One out of them. Nearly the biggest trouble. Needs a max. Needs to fill. 100. One hundred. Good last start. Good last leg, potentially, here from Andy Jenkins. Two 140s and a ton. 140. Andy Six here, the 121. One hundred and five. Right on the wire for a 12 data to wrap it up and finish a very polished performance. Will return regardless what Adam does. He's three darts at double eight for the match for Andy Jenkins. Andy Rukar, 16. Game shot in the match. Andy double Jenkins. four for a 4 1 win for Andy Jenkins, which just gives him a glimmer of opportunity of getting into Group B. It makes things interesting now. Just two points separate Jenkins and Mould in the league table, although Rocky will have to. Overcome a nine-point swing in the legs different. So that is a 4-1 victory there for Andy Jenkins. We're going to take a short break. When we return, it's going to be the league leader, Richie Houghton, in action, as you can see there. He's going to take on Darren Johnson. Do join us for all the action in a few minutes' time.
So then Andy Jenkins seemingly back in the race to make it into Group B later this week. That after a very decent darting display from Rocky to beat Adam Mould 4-1, an average of 94.37, 50% checkout success rate as well there for Andy Jenkins, who dominated that match and keeps himself in contention for a top three finish. He's chasing down Adam Mould, the man he's just beaten, just two points behind him now and does have the opportunity to make it through to the evening sessions on Thursday and Friday. Uh, we're well, coming next. We're going to see the league leader in action, Richie House, and he's taking on Darren Johnson. Has beaten him twice already this week. And this 101 checkout got the job done in their maiden meeting on Monday. And the Owl returned to get a similar result yesterday. Looked like his chances were damaged a little bit in an early defeat to Adam Mould this morning, but he bounced back with victory over Martin Turner. And another win over Johnson here would see Housen all but seal top spot and a place in Saturday's finals night. So let's see if he can take that step closer to what would be an almost unassailable lead in Group A in the company of Matthew Edgar and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Chris. And the group could well effectively be decided here but beware Darren Johnson on day three here at the Super Series because he's put in some good stuff he averaged 89 and lost 4-0 in the opening game of the day against Martin Turner but then he returned to take on Peter Manley and it was a bit of a reversal it was an 82 average and a 4-0 success against one dart and he's playing his best darts of the week here today and we're having a look at the odds for this one He's a 7-4 to four outsider, but if you base on what's happened today from both players, that could represent a little bit of value. Richie Houghton, 2-5 before the off here. The story of his day is as follows. He lost 4-2 to Adam Mould in his opening. He averaged 83. He's averaged 83 in both of his matches so far, but it has been a case of missed doubles for Richie at this present moment in time, which was something we First didn't leg, really see in the last the couple first. of days. Game on. No, and to the level in which we're seeing from Richie Housen at the moment, that is the possible concern and the increased performance from Darren Johnson is the other concern here. But it is winning you in as far as I'm concerned. If he wins this, he's still got that game coming up later on with Peter Manley. And I think we can say that Richie Housen has won this group if he was to win this. Even if he's to lose this game, I think he's still a very, very strong favourite to get to this group. I think 22 points is going to be enough to wrap this one up. And Richie's got three matches where he could get six points. He could still reach 26 points. 96. Darren Johnson playing himself into a bit of form. He looked decent in that victory over Peter Manley, didn't he? 4-0. Um, it was the doubles that just brought the average 81. down slightly. Around about the 90 mark against Martin Turner in his opening game. It's the movement around the board for me that Darren Johnson has really it's stepped 95. it up for in this sort of series of games today. And we always see it on Wednesday that someone who on Monday and Tuesday haven't quite got themselves in the, in the positions to win the group can be a right old spoiler by performing well on Wednesday. Well, Johnson's doing exactly that. A six from the fish. 100. He's himself on 70 after 12. Housen, with a steady enough start himself. But Johnson 16. here on for Daniel 14 Fox dart 70. leg, potentially. Be happy enough to get it done in 15. 14 may be done on tops. 15 if you can get double 10. 60. And so Housen has a chance, an Richie outside Rukawa squeak on 160. But the way he's been finishing this week thus far, do not rule it out. This could get awkward here. The pressure is coming on the shot here from Richie Housen. Daniel Darren Johnson 10. has pulled a few darts low. He goes low on this five. That's a nice lie there for Darren Johnson. You expect this one just to go underneath. Five. Richie it did go underneath, 60. but it's gone low. And Housen, probably an unexpected opportunity here. 
in the midway part of that leg. Pick his Game pocket. Game on the first leg. Richie Helson. Helson. Reef finds that double in form there. One dart needed to get that one wrapped up. And Howson, every time he wins a leg, we just look at the league table and just think, Second this leg, Richie, is about Game on. finished in terms of the winner of this group. Well, if Howson wins, he gets himself on 22 points. But 81. realistically, it'll be 2 times 10 plus 1, Romeo Dunn. And he's still going, even though the Christmas party is well and truly over. 56. Still works in the lyrics. There's something happening with the screen, lads. Um, some music that's come on and the caption saying Apple iPhone on. Well, just having a bit of a technical moment here. So we're going to head back into the commentary box where myself and Matthew Edgar occupy ourselves. And midway through the second leg here, between Johnson and Howson. Just something just happening. Game three commands Richie to throw. Now, getting back to the game and Richie Howson in front here, we can certainly say that Darren Johnson has more no, than enough want. of the game here to cause the problems here for Richie Howson in winning this group. Not only the recent form that we've been talking about, that 2022 WF 60. Northern Ireland Open, but actually when you look through his achievements, one of them was he played in the Players' Championship Finals in 2017. And I've just had a look at what ranking he went into that Players' Championship. He went in as number 41. That means in 2017, 87. on the one-year ranking system, Darren Johnson was ranked 41 of the two, well, the 128 tour card holders. Did lose 100. in the opening game to John Henderson in that event, but you've got the capability of being number 41 on the Pro Tour order of merit for the season. You know that you've got that pedigree in the locker. 82. Ninety-four. Richie Ocar, 160. One hundred. Good last dart from Housen. Thought he might have blocked that one, and he just found the corner of the treble bed. One hundred and forty-one. Johnson finds the pressure. Richie Wilkar, sixty. But Richie Housen made no problems of this in the opening leg when he broke the Darren Johnson throw. He makes on no problems in the second leg where he holds it. He looks like the man we saw. On Monday, he looks like the man that came into this group today as the one to six favourite to so get the job to done. First, game on. And he might just be a couple of legs away from us realistically saying that his game set and match. 56. It's almost like that defeat to Adam Mould in the opener was a bit of a wake up call to go and get the job done and get it done as quickly as possible. Because since then, he's beaten Martin Turner by four legs to one and now 2 0 up here against Darren Johnson, who 100. Came out the tracks flying, averaging 84. But Housen has just found a way to continually put him under pressure. And those five Easy. missed darts at double have given Housen the opportunity to open up that two leg advantage. 100. That first dart was absolutely. Even though I wasn't in the treble bed, it was good enough for Housen to work with. Ninety. Sixty. Pretty well thrown darts there from House, and with very little reward. However, I do feel he would have probably preferred those to be underneath the bed rather than on top. One hundred and twenty-five. Johnson goes inside to lead the Whitlock. Three balls. Although I don't think he'll go for it like Whitlock did. One hundred. I hope he does. That to be one of the best shots of last year. That the three balls from Simon Whitlock, and I believe it was for the match as well, wasn't it? Won the match, yeah. Incredible. Forty-three. Richie Ocar, one hundred and forty-one. 
We've seen this wide by Martin Turner today, but Houghton isn't going to take out the one for one. Johnson here on 107 to get a leg back. This has kind of been the finishing phase that Houghton's been so prolific at this week. 16 and tops. Tops it is. Game's to give Richie a Don't taste of his own medicine. Back to 2-1, but Houghton has the throw for a 3-1 lead. And that was crucial as well because Richie was left on 44. Game on. Could have easily been 3-0 on Houghton throwing for whitewash success. But Johnson very much alive in this match. 100. But of every single question that is asked of Richie House, and he usually conjures up an answer. 97. One hundred and forty. And that's why he wants that dart just lying underneath the treble twenty. We saw it in the last shot with a hundred. We see it there with a the one forty. Forty-two. He is turning the screw. He knows he doesn't want to be here Thursday and Friday. He wants to be going down Portsmouth Seafront. He wants to be playing on the slots. He wants to be having himself a an ice cream with a flake. You won't get that down here in this weather. 140. Be lucky to have that dodgy chippy open. 84. But again, in a big Richie game, Housen is up to it. Average of 95. 1 2 1 after 9. For a 3 1 lead. Doesn't have to go shovel 17 bull with Johnson all the way back on 2 7 8. He's been given time in this leg. And leaves himself double 18 after 12 to open up that advantage again. 100. Richie will require 36. Quite rare that we're seeing Richie Housen over this side of the board. You go to the other side now. Is he going to. 20. Going to split it nicely there. Leaves himself the double eight. This is more familiar territory here for Richie Housen. His opportunity to put himself a leg away from, in Richie my opinion, not just this match, but this group. It won Michael Smith the world title last night. It's not going to help Richie Housen en route Eight. to winning the group on Double this occasion. Neither will the double four. And so Johnson, who took out a 107 in the previous leg, is back for 83. It was a treble 17 that helped him in that finish. 51. But that bounce out didn't help him there. And so Housen returns Richie to the double four for three one to put himself a leg away. Game shot on the floor Unquestionably his biggest double of the week. When you talk about red pen moments, important moments in a group, we've got two in Richie Housen's last game. That double two, last night in hand after missing like seven darts at the first. double. Game when on. Martin Turner sat ready to break the throw, Richie Housen then went on to win that one. That moment there, two darts at the double to level the match, break the throw, and be favourite to win this game from that point. Darren Johnson missed those two darts. Richie Housen goes out. Those two big key 16. moments have both gone the way of Housen. Surely, surely, 140. you thought the bed was gaping for another one. One hundred and twenty five. And this is why I say Housen doesn't like that dart going high. Just look at the angle there. He's blocked off that left-hand side of the 43. bed. 
That's why I was so impressed with him early where he managed to find that corner and just power it through those darts in the board. And Darren Johnson, you see how it kicks up at the the angle there. He'll prefer it to go well, high and then come underneath. Three. It's all how the dart sits in the board. It's all relative to the action of the player, the equipment that they use. Getting all that in sync. 60, Darren Yorkar, 73. Darren Johnson, 73 points away from in that second leg on the board. Thirty-three. More doubling issues for Darren Johnson. Missed six darts with no return in his first game. It took him thirteen darts to get his four legs against Peter Manley. One from Daniel nine Brown in 40. this one. Alarming numbers. In the Darren Johnson, the camp. Darren Johnson But importantly, he's still in the game. But this is the leg where Housen has the darts. Averages identical, both 85.34. But it's Housen with the throw for the win and most likely for group success. And what a way to start! What, what a way, way to start! Yeah, Housen's next game would be against Peter Manley, and he would be throwing first in that match. With that in mind, I have to say that Housen 100. winning this will be all but done. It'll only be legs that could catch him, and he'll take an absolute miracle of a turnaround on that. 140. Darren Johnson is not lying down back to back 140s northern ireland champion 60. man who is top of the seniors order of merit 100 rich your car 161 He outscored Richie Housen in this leg, despite the fact Housen kicked off with a 180. 65. Good Daniel thinking Carl, there from the Owl. Made himself a possible two darter. It's only possible Darren Johnson doesn't take out the 1-2-1. One. 107. Richie Ucar, 96. Housen will not get his chance 56. this time. And so 14. Johnson to take us to a decider and a leg that Housen kicked off Max with the darts. Game shot on the and we'll go leg. all Darren the way Johnson. to the decider. This always had the feel of a tricky assignment for Richie Housen. Darren Johnson, who is playing his best darts of the week today. Final a 14 darter there, Game on. averaging 88. And he is the one who has the throw. It is he who has his destiny in his hands. And it is he... 121. ...who kicks off well and forces the issue of Housen. Remember, Housen had the throw in the last leg and did kick off with that maximum, the 180. This game is... 100. ...a very warm finale. It's a shame it doesn't go on a bit longer because these two have really found stride in this one. And this is the last leg. The winner takes it all, and the all is the two points on the table. 95. Martin Turner is trying to chase down Richie Housen, so he'll be backing his fellow Yorkshireman here, Darren Johnson. Martin Turner's next game is against 41. Andy Jenkins. Andy Jenkins would like to spoil that party there with the positions two and three and get himself through to Thursday and Friday night. And a chance 100. to participate on Saturday where you can join us for the Darty Party in Pompey. Dartshop.tv for the tickets. Yesterday we thought it was a cast iron guarantee we'd see Richie Halson there courtesy of Group A. Well, his chances are still good, but he's still got work to do. 26. But that's a slip. That's a slip. A slip enough not to leave him on a finish. 
from 185. And can Housen take full advantage? It's never what over till it's amazing. over. And he just seems to always carve out an opening. That shot for Darren Johnson is a result 40. of not winning the last couple of days. Left 119. I can guarantee you dart players hate 119. It is the worst finish on the board as a player. We might not even need to worry about it. 40. Darren Yuka, 119. Can take out the nasty. The 119. So even if you get that treble, you're still most likely to be on the ball. Richie Housen expects. 86. He's miscounted. He's gone for the bullseye. Yuka, what a time to do that. And he's realised what he's done. Because what he's done is given Richie Housen the chance on tops. Game to seal the win, 4-3. A huge, huge, huge moment in this group. And Richie Housen is on the hill. He can almost touch Saturday night now as he beats Darren Johnson 4-3. But the huge talking point was Darren Johnson with the miscount right to the very end. He looked as if he harbored himself an opportunity to win the match. But it's Richie Housen who extends his lead at the top. And he's now 22 points for Housen. At the top of the table, with just two games left to play. We're going to take a short break. When we return, Adam Mould is in the race to seal a top three position and a spot in Group B. He takes on Peter Mandley. Can one dart get his first victory at the Super Series? Well, it looks like Richie Housen is going to rule Group A here at the Super Series, and Darren Johnson may well rue that miscount at the end of the match. The tail of the tape in that one shows a 4-3 win for Housen. Johnson going for the ball when that's not what he needed at the end of the game, and Housen capitalising by pinning double top to take a victory. That means he is almost there. Pulls further clear at the top of the table 
and is looking in great shape to secure a finals night spot and earn himself a couple of days rest ahead of Saturday night. Right then, our commentary team of Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar will guide you through the next match between Adam Mould and Peter Manley, whose presence here at the Moda Super Series this week is all about trying to find some form for the upcoming World Seniors Darts Championship. We are ready. The players are ready. And it's tungsten time. Doesn't matter what Bob does. Come on, give us a 180. And he's Woo! given it. There it is. We won. Yeah, it meant a lot winning it. And get my name on the trophy first. And play Martin in the final, who's all the better. I've got my own back for Lakeside. And... A place in the darting history books. A little further north. Yes, that's further north. And the man from Ayrshire in Scotland, Robert Thornton, becomes the first ever Jennings Bet World Seniors Darts Champion. Listen, well, it'd be amazing to get to the final and hopefully have the same score line. <laughs> <laughs> Proof that he was a world class player. Doesn't matter where he plays. Oh, yeah. Double 18. Gains Listen the to the crowd. Martin Adams. I mean, the crowd were absolutely fantastic. I mean, it was what we, we might refer to as old guys, uh, as a proper darts crowd. You know, we, we didn't have a load of singing and chanting and all that sort of stuff, just great support all the way through. Uh, and the crowd were absolutely brilliant. And hopefully this year we'll see the same crowd. It'd be great. So, you know, I've just got to get number one underneath my belt first, and then we'll take it from there. But yeah. you've got to stop him, haven't I? <laughs> We cannot wait for it. the Jennings Bet World Seniors Darts Championship 2023 is almost upon us. The 9th to the 12th of February at the Circus Tavern. Tickets start from £13. Do join us. It's dartshop.tv if you want to go and get some tickets for that. You can see some of the legends of the game in action. We're going to see Peter one dark man in there. We're going to see the power, Phil Taylor. Robert Thornton, of course, trying to defend his title. He beat Martin Wolfie Adams in that final last year. And amongst the other big names involved, you're going to see the likes of Bob Anderson, Keith Della, Trina Gulliver, Kevin Painter, Tony O'Shea, John Parr, and the reigning WDF Men's World Champion in Neil Looks Duff like as well. So we look forward to the World Seniors at the Circus Game Tavern on. in a few weeks' time. And if you can't make it to the Tavern, it's also available via BT Sport and the BBC iPlayer. Peter Manley, who's going to be one of the stars of the event, gets us 100. underway. And it is going to be a great event. Yeah, I think it's wide open. I'd like to see the book get opened on it soon because I'd like to see where people are going with that one. I think Richie House has got a good claim in this week that if he does get there, he could be one of the runners and riders. Obviously, Kevin Painter, someone I know very well, will certainly be well prepared for that one. I feel like it's it. about time, or I feel it's going to happen, though, for Phil Taylor. Came close a couple of times last year. We started to see a bit more of the power in terms of level of expectation. And I would not what be surprised to see Phil Taylor take taking that one. Sixty. Eighty one. Mold leaves himself on a finish after nine. Manley back in the 300s. 45. Adam in your car, 140. 180 there from Adam Mold, really giving him the opportunity. We have a 180 and a 140 finish in the same leg. He'll probably be a bit disappointed. He's come inside there, leaving himself to 10. That's a little bit trickier. But... This is a break of throw opportunity for Adam Mould that he's got time with. Don't see him faffing around with it too much. Straight for it. No splitting. Game shot it's in not the first in the MO of Adam Mould. It is straight for it. It's a 14 dart leg. And it's more of the same, unfortunately, for Peter Manley. 
Second leg, Adam to throw first. Game on. You see Peter Manley playing in the seniors tour last year. He played in the match play. Went to extra 100. time against John Parr. Ended up winning that one 11 10. And face his old nemesis, 41. Phil Taylor. Taylor getting the better of him on that occasion and also in the seniors world championship. 96. That was quite the uh, quite the entertainment, wasn't it? That one man against Taylor. Of course, the hype over previous matchups. 46. And dare I say it, Chris Mason's unseeded in this tournament. Could get Mason v Taylor first round. When Chris Mason played in this a couple of weeks ago, we could get Mason being the seniors world champion. I'm sure he won't tell us about that every single day. As long as he puts the trophy somewhere in this commentary box when we're working together next, I don't mind. It's the closest I'll ever get to a world title of any sort. 58. One hundred. I don't know about one hundred and forty. Peter Manley tends to tail off as the day goes. Possibly a sign of age now sixty years old. Not someone who is match fit. Doesn't get a lot of reps in, doesn't get a lot of time on the board. We're gonna see that same pattern today. Go on, Peter. One hundred and forty. I think 20. we all wanted to see that go in. Double 10 for 2 0. Averaging 101 and a half. Game shot on the second round. Really way. good performance Adam from Mould. Adam Mould. Mould like isn't Peter in the fold first. to qualify Game for on. Saturday night's finals through Group A, but in the three player out of five going through Group B scenario tomorrow, which with this win, would we'll give himself a good chance 100. of doing. And even if he gets into Group C, You'd fancy his chances of making it through to Saturday night's final. Incidentally, if you are looking at who is to come this week, Group B sees Robert Thornton, Trina Gulliver, and Ian Moss in action. That's the 10 o'clock group tomorrow evening. And then tomorrow morning, we're going to see Mike Huntley, Steve Perrin, 44. and Alan Norris. Chuck is in action. Looking forward to seeing Alan Norris, actually. He's been playing on and off. He's certainly been playing 100. plenty. I've seen he's been playing in my local Super League up in Warwickshire. I've also seen that he's been playing on the Challenge Tour. He's been playing okay, and then he can find a level of performance on top as well. I'm so really, really interested to see if he can produce some of the Alan Norris of old. He will Six tell feet. you that it's the Alan Norris of the future. He thinks he's going to have Alan Norris Phase 2. Really start to show that down here over the next couple of days. 26. A better way to start off phase two than winning stage two of the Super Series. We'll be in the running coming tomorrow morning, 9.30 a.m. Sporty Stuff TV on the Moda Super Series YouTube channel. Mold leaving 160 up to 12 for a 3-0 lead. Again, we're seeing a player go upstairs on the 303. Interestingly, I've just been given a a tweet, and that today is actually a significant Six day eight. in the history of darts because it was on the 4th of January 1993 where 16 players signed up to the World Darts Council, now known as the Professional Darts Corporation. 95. That was when the breakaway happened. Adam Hillcar, 100. Talk about having the vision. Certainly saw what was achievable. Game shot on the third leg. Adam, Adam Mould. Mould. We'll feel like a 4 0 win is achievable in this one. As that 100 finish from Adam Mould has put himself one leg away from the match. And Manly. Fourth leg, Adam to me yesterday, the focus on. is Thursday and Friday. It's going to have to be because he's running into a couple of performances today. It's almost like the players are sensing the weakness here. Or sensing the opportunity that when playing Peter Manley it presents. 
6A. Forty one. Now, Peter Manley could well be on the cusp of another four nil defeat here. At the start of the day, you could have got odds of him doing that in every fixture at eight hundred to one. One hundred and forty. Yeah, definitely value in that one at the moment but we know that anyone can play a leg of darts and peter manley has shown that 62. so far this week he's had a 15 dart or he's been down to a double after 12 he's had glimpses one thing we haven't had from peter manley so far is a maximum of 180. 100. Ninety one out of your car, one hundred and twenty. Double ten. Game shot in the match for oh. a four nil success for Adam Mould. And it is more of the same feeling for Peter Manley. An impressive performance for Mould, averaging ninety two and a half in the process, two ton plus checkouts en route to that win as well. And so the victory there for Adam Mould puts him into second place onto 16 points above Martin Turner in the league table. That pretty much, you'd say, puts him into Group B tomorrow night. So we are going to take a short break when we return. Martin Turner in third up against Andy Jenkins in fourth. This is a pivotal fixture and it's coming next. Well, things are getting mouldy for Manley, aren't they? That is three straight whitewash defeats today for the former world number one. Not looking good at all for Peter Manley, who did improve yesterday, but today it's flatlined for him. Adam Mulder did put in a very decent display, that has to be said. 92.49 average, 120 checkout, and four out of nine 
on the doubles and that just tightens his grip on third on a top three finish in the table rather second place now same points as martin turner four clear of andy jenkins so jenkins he's going to need to pull off something special and hope for favors himself peter manley still yet to get off the mark two more games for him to do so uh, and andy jenkins is in action next he is going to take on martin turner the man sitting in third place so an opportunity to maybe catch martin turner here a bit of a four pointer so to speak and the pair have enjoyed a victory each against each other this week martin turner getting the job done on monday and andy jenkins returning the result 24 hours later so we'll get the action back underway a big game this pivotal one really if uh, turner wins it's looking like it will be all settled as to who goes into what groups uh, but if andy jenkins wins then it is game on for rocky back to henry and matt thank you very much chris yes this is probably the most important game in terms of jostling for position left in this group it's the group b i suppose effectively shootout to a certain extent because if martin turner wins this game from that point onwards the gap is six points is insurmountable andy jenkins brings it back to 14 is very much game on and adam mold would not be safe either but also if andy jenkins wins this game richie house and can book his date on saturday night he's the only man that can stop first richie like house to throw first game on but then he would have to avenge a gap of 14. That's in standing the legs difference. So remember, you can only swing eight legs in a particular cycle of fixtures. So a maximum is 16 in the swing, and he'd need 14 of them. So you can put House in a red pencil, 30. but you could put it in pen and sign the paperwork if Jenkins gets a win here. Now, what do Pretty we fine. see from Jenkins? I mentioned before the last Andy Jenkins game when I was upstairs with Chris Murphy that he's been throwing well but not getting the darts the right side of the wire. They've all been touching it. That last game was the Pretty opposite. Eight. They started to go inside. He had that 4-1 win over Adam Mould who just continues to impress. 95 average for Andy Jenkins in that one. 140. Is he continuing that form or... Can we go back to the... Near misses. One is on eighty. Right on cue, Andy Jenkins fills it up. One hundred and twenty-five. Turner needs himself an eighty-one after twelve, so Jenkins needs two trebles here. That's not going to happen. One hundred. Finds one to Martin keep himself interested. But Turner here, 81, to get the opening leg. Two 16s. 49. Would have got the job done, but Jenkins here, one free free to break the throw, and in spectacular style if he could as well. It's not going to happen. Can't be done now. 93. Turner leads 32. Game shot on the first leg. Martin and Turner. Turner takes the opener. Martin Turner's impressed me. Adam Mould's impressed me. They've, they've, they've really stood up in this so group so far. To first game on. But when it comes down to who's been the standout for you, obviously you can't say Richie Housen because he's top of the table. 59. Who's been the standout for you out of the other players other than Richie, who looks like he's already going through? Who do you expect to see join Richie Housen on Saturday? Adam. 95. Darren plays to this standard. I think he'll be in. But never, ever write off no Andy Jenkins. Know, He's playing well today. And the two-day groups, he always seems to find a way. 100. Always finds a way. There's three things that are certain in life. Death, taxes, and Andy Jenkins winning a two-day group. One hundred and forty. One 
56. Forty-two. Andy O'Carr, one hundred and seventy. We haven't had a one seventy yet this week. So far. One hundred and forty-five. Oh, good effort there from Andy Jenkins. Andy O'Carr, one hundred and twenty-four. Good game. Good start from both. No shot on for Martin Turner, so Jenkins will return for the twenty-five. He will return to level the game. Is the consecutive holds a throw. Game shot on the second leg, Andy Jenkins. And a comfortable hold at that for Andy Jenkins. So level we are then, at one apiece. You can't really split them, 89 and the 90, the averages. Third leg, Martin to throw both first. Both players 50% on. on their doubles. And both legs, one within six visits. 131. So that's a good start for Turner at the beginning of the third. And I have neglected you of the... Tungsten teaser. 45. We got two of them today. Teaser number one is this, and you've got up 96. until Andy, the end of Andy Jenkins' next game against Darren Johnson, a couple of games' time to get it. How many legs was played in yesterday's World Championship final between Michael Smith and Michael Van Gerwen? How many legs were played in last night's World Championship final? At MSS Darts on Facebook, Twitter, Six and days. Instagram. You can tweet us. It's at the Edgar 501, at H underscore D Comedia as well. If you want to get in touch with any observations and thoughts? 78. 134. 140, Martin, you require 80. Two tens. 70. He just has a mini opportunity here to Andy Jenkins. If he can find a treble, he could get a dart at the double here. Just trying to weigh up his options, work out which way he wants to go. Stay on the 20s, or he could have gone to the 18s. Decides to stay on the 20s without success. 44. Martin Yorkwar, 10. This double five has been tricky for players today. I've not enjoyed this area of the board for that reason. I'm going to split to the twos. Six. Andy Yorkwar, 60. Richie Howson might be about to win this group without needing to throw another dart. Game shot on the third leg. Andy and Jenkins. How good has Andy Jenkins been on tops all day? Every single time he has needed that double when it's become clutch, he has found first. it. Game on. He's halfway towards win, towards the win. He's broken the turn of throw. Forty. But how many times do we see that? When a player obtains the break of throw, the first scoring visit afterwards is treblous. One hundred. And incidentally, going back to the Tungsten teaser, I have actually heard a correct answer in, the, in my year via our production 99. team. 99. 99. Yeah, I have no idea what the, the answer to that was. I did watch the final. 97. I did enjoy it. I thought it was fantastic. Possibly one of the most entertaining finals, just because of the pace of 100. the game as well. I really enjoy watching two quick players just... Battle it out at the highest level and for most of the game, well over the 100 mark. I don't know what it felt like to you, but it gave me a similar feeling to the 2008 Wimbledon final. When Rafa Nadal and Roger Federer played an epic. 52. And it felt like that's going to be the beginning of some rivalry for years to come. And you just get the sense that that final might just be the first of many 100. superb games at latter ends of tournaments at that they're going to play. And, and, and just a sense that that's probably, and quite possibly, the rivalry in the sport now. The two best players in the world, so there's no arguments about that. 58. Martin O'Carr, 149. 
Well, if you asked Gerwin Price, he'd want to have a good argument about that one. I do think Peter Wright's coming out of the mix now, though, when we talk about that elite world number one position. 100. Martin Ewell Carl. Martin Turner do. Andy Jenkins made up his options and decided on the 20s. Martin Turner, the 16s. I'm seeing this a lot more now. 84. And you Carl, 52. Martin Turner getting no better results when it comes to wrapping up the leg. Twenty. Big Martin miss. Martin Ewell 20. Turner returns for double 10. Fight. No score. Oh, that's dragged Andy wide. Andy 32. That was dragged wide and into the 12. And so it presents Jenkins of another opportunity. Double eight. 24. Martin and because he passed the score, it may have actually worked out a treat now because he can go back Green to double ten. It wasn't Martin by design, Turner. but he'll take the execution. And we're back level at two apiece. A bizarre few seconds at the Super Series. Turner breaks back. We're back on throw. This leg, Martin, to throw first. And it's here, he's back in the ascendancy. And Jenkins jaunts along the stage, incandescent with what's just happened. 57. I sort of get the vibe from Martin Turner that he's a player that knows he's drinking in the last chance saloon. And even then, he's pretty much out Nighty. of the last chance saloon, really, because we know that the next game for Richie Housen is against Peter Manley. Peter Manley has yet to win a leg today. He's lost all 42. 12 legs that he has played in. And hasn't really bought himself too many chances even to win those legs. It's not like he's been missing the doubles. One hundred and thirty. He had a single dart at a double in his game with Adam Mould. He had two darts when he played Darren Johnson in his first game 96. of the day when he took on Andy Jenkins. He did have six. So he's only mustered up eight darts at a double so far in the 12 legs that he has been beaten in. 84. Well, my turn is not just... Well, he's, he's being kicked out of the last chance saloon and he's hoping that there's a lock-in. That is effectively the scenario he's in. 123. 23. One thing we know about a lock-in, A, it's illegal, and B, it's not as fun as you think it would be. 100. Jenkins then, 112. For yet another break. We're threatening break Athlon territory here. 60. Martin Yoka, 83. The bullseye. 58. Big Andy moment. Yoka, 52. Jenkins can reclaim the break which he lost in the last. If he can pin this tops, which has been so fruitful for him today. But not on that occasion, 42. and neither is the double Martin 10, Yoka, and Turner returns to go with him one. Game shot on the fifth leg, Martin Turner. Opportunities presented themselves for Andy Jenkins. He was not able to take any of them. Martin Turner punishing the missed opportunities there from Andy Jenkins, just like fifth happened to him early on in the day. One when he was looking like he could have drew level with Richie Housen at one point on points, and Richie Housen, keep going back to 100. it, because it was such a crucial moment when he hit that double two. Last start in hand, Martin Turner waiting to pounce. 131. 60. This just keeps Richie Housen on edge a little bit, doesn't it? It just makes him... I mean, we expect Rich Housen to go and beat Peter Manley in the 95. next game quite convincingly, but Martin Turner just wants to keep niggling, breathing down his neck a little bit, although forty-one, he's quite a far way back. It's not quite down his neck, but just keep him honest. 180. And if nothing more... For his own sake, because he mentioned, didn't he, how he feels more comfortable, more confident on there now. One in front of those cameras, Matthew playing 95. on the stage. He might have a stage to play on soon. That might be the lakeside. 
He'll be hoping to play on Saturday night stage. Shot and he will be Martin playing Fair. for £5,000. One stage he will be playing on is this stage tomorrow night. Group B looks to be in the future of Martin Turner after that two points and a 4-2 victory there over Andy Jenkins. But can Group A be wrapped up? It could be wrapped up in our very next game when Richie Housen takes on Peter Manley. This is the Modus Super Series. One hundred and eighty. Free to watch as well here on Sporty Stuff TV, the biggest darts tournament in terms of airtime in the world. And you can watch it all for free. You can even be here for free on Saturday nights as well. Henry and Matthew Edgar will provide you with all the details during commentary of the next match. But in the last one, well, it was a significant win, wasn't it, for Martin Turner against Andy Jenkins there. A 4-2 success in what could prove to be a pivotal match in terms of who makes it through to Group B later in the week. Jenkins's race, in terms of that, might just about be run. As we can see in the Group A table, the gap now, four points to Adam Mould, and all the players have just two games left to play. Richie Housen can confirm his place at finals night with victory in his next one, and he takes on... Peter Manley yet to get a win so far on his first outing at the Super Series. Uh, Housen has enjoyed victory twice against Manley so far this week. And the pair of them just completing their practice starts there for this one. And I will hand you over to our commentary team of Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar. Thank you very much, Chris. Yes, so Richie Housen with victory here will go through to 
Saturday night's final. Peter Manley has yet to pick up a win this week. And I don't want to sound at all disrespectful here whatsoever, but if Manley did pull off a win here, it would be the biggest upset we've ever seen here at the Super Series. We've only got to look at the odds to further that. You're not making an opinion there. It's a case in point on the fact of the odds compilers as well. They've put Peter Manley to win this one match 20 to 1. Just to win this match. Which has 1 to 66. Not really one that you can get too involved with in terms of playing along with this one, but it's kind of been backed in all day. It was 1 to 25 this morning, 12 to 1 Peter Manley, so it's not like it's something that we kind of didn't see coming at the start of the day, but Manley's form just hasn't been there, has it? And he's First not won a leg all day first. today. He's only had eight darts at the double, and he's taken Game on Richie House, who's top of the table. Is it only going one way? You would think so. And if it is the case, Housen will be through to Saturday night's final here at the Moders Live Lounge in Portsmouth, where you can join us every single Saturday night. As Murph mentioned, tickets are free. We're here in Portsmouth on the sunny south coast, although it's not really sunny today. Dartshot.tv, the place to be to get those tickets. And it really is a unique darting experience. It's a place for the darts fans to really come and enjoy their darts and, and enjoy it in a unique atmosphere. One out of them, four. Really are close to the stage. Get the chance to see the players Perfect. before you go out on to, before they go out and play their big games and, and things like that. It's it, it it's unique. It really is unique and it's something that you have to tick off the bucket list at, at some point. And the atmosphere in here, when it is filled to the rafters, it, it, feel, it feels like a, a, a big stage venue. Yeah, I've had a couple of tweets come through from people that are coming to join us. Can't wait to meet you guys. You come and join us on Saturday night. Saturday night could be a decent crowd, especially if Andy Jenkins does get through as well. You sort of feel 85. tickets may become a bit of a premium if he gets through, because there might not be many to be had. There's 200,000 people that live in Portsmouth, and Andy Jenkins will probably bring 199,000 of them. House and double 18 for 13. Double nine. 28. Said earlier on when he left that, it was weird. We don't see him in that area too often. There's three darts there to. The first 99. leg of this match. Which you require eight. This is for a holder throw. Game shot on the first leg. Which is up there in the first time of asking for the man in the Aston Villa colours. Can you think of a Peter team first. for Peter Game Manley? On. Pardon? Can you think of a team for Peter Manley? We've got Aston Villa versus. I know Sheffield United used to have a away kit, I believe, that was pink. So the QPR. There's a team somewhere. I can't think where. It might be to Miami, possibly. But there's a team in Europe. There's a team in Europe. Palmer. There we go, Palmer. 45. Former uh, Europa Cup champions. Big Carlisle United fan, isn't he? Peter One Dark Manley. Brundle Park, their home ground. 140. Brunton Park, my apologies. Brundle Park is where Grinsby play. One of the favourite visits 83. to an away ground. Away to Blackpool, away to Grimsby. Absolutely not. I don't know how I didn't fall from 10,000 feet and die at the gantry at Grimsby. 177. Excellent dart from Housen. 115 average at the minute for Housen. This is a blockbuster game. A blockbuster average. 
He's on for an 11. 97, Richie Rukar, 44. If it wasn't for the missed doubles in the opening leg, he was on for a tidy one in the first as well. He's not just going to try and coast through this and stumble to the line. He's trying to race beyond it. But Peter Manley, got to be said, this is a much better performance from him. His average is over the 80 mark, 16. which is well above from anything we've seen of him so far today. He's been down in the 60s. Nelson, though. Game shot on this second leg. It is more familiar part of the board over by that double eight. Yes, that wrapped up in 14 darts gives him an average of 15 darts per leg. Gives him an average of 100.20. Third leg, Richie to throw first. Game on. Forty one. One hundred. What will be Peter Manley's goals in Group C? Do you think that there was a really I can't remember what the, the book was, but there was a book 100. where there's all these roads and twists and turns and things in front of everybody, and they AA need, roadmap. <laughs> they need to get to the destination. 99. They get to the end of it, and he stands there and he goes don't know how to get to the end of the road and the guy next to him turns around and says do you know how to take the next step and he says yes he says, okay then what i'll the take that next step and then we'll work out what the next step is in the next one don't try and plan the whole journey think about what that next step is for peter manley it's winning a game that is 45. the next step Also, like a max as well. That's the one thing we're missing on the manly repertoire. 44. We had a maximum from Richie Housen in this one. Just, just giving that little bit of a buffer in the scoreboard. 41. Richie Vacar, 136. 80 points plus these. Six starts to get this wrapped up, get it 3 0. Give Manley 15 straight legs without 100. reply. Which enters record territory. 60. Richie Rukar, 36. For 3 0. Game shot on the third leg, Richie Housen. That is a 16 data. This is Richie Housen's best performance of the day. This is Richie Housen's best performance since Monday. It could be Richie Housen's best performance of the well, year. Peter to throw first. Game on. And again, it's so easy in these types of matches to possibly go through the motions and secure the 45. victory. But for Richie Housen, he's averaging 98. 37.5% on the doubles. He's scoring on the power pack. He's consistent 85. as it gets. He is spraying that treble segment. Go on, Peter. 85. That is sat nice in the bed, just to the left-hand side at the bottom wire. 140. I was say, I'd be very disappointed if he didn't find a 140 after that first dart. If he could go to the board and take his dart and put it in the board where he wants it, it would have 60. been there. Forty-five. You sense he's going to get time, though. Already. One hundred. Eighty-three. 
This could be an opportunity for Manley to get his first leg of the day. 97. Richie Ricard, 148. Sort of feel a bit engrossed with the story here, don't you, of Manley? 100. Peter Carr, 140. He couldn't do a house in, could he? Maybe not. 44. The house in here. 48. 48 points away from a 4 0 win and from Saturday night's final. Double 16. Game shot on the match, Richie Housen. And the Owl has been the prize man in Group A, and he qualifies for Saturday night's final, courtesy of a 4-0 success against Peter Manley. With a 95 average, 4 from 9 on the doubles, and the man who was one of the stars of the world seniors last year is going to be starring at Saturday night again here at the Super Series. He'll be looking to put the bed the rows of the nine dart shootout back in October. He has got that chance. He is through two finals night on Saturday. Many, many congratulations go to him. We're going to take a short break. When we return, it's Andy Jenkins in action against Darren Johnson. Welcome back. Matthew Edgar rejoins me to discuss what's happening. It's good timing as well, Matt, because Richie Housen is now confirmed for a finals night, and I don't think we can argue that he deserves it. He's been the best player, hasn't he? Besides Adam Mould, he's been the absolute standout performer. He's the rightful guy through to Saturday, and I think he's going to be joined by some players from this group as well when we look at those Group B and C positions. Yeah, well, Martin Turner and Adam Mould in those positions right now. Housen has just beaten Peter Manley. 4-0. Now, we could get a couple of really interesting uh, results here. We could see Richie Housen finishing 26 points clear of bottom place Peter Manley. Do you think that there is any chance that Manley, first of all, will get a win in this group? Second of all, will get a leg today. His last match is against second place Martin Turner. 
Yeah, I said down in commentary that sometimes when the road ahead looks so long and so varied like it does right now for Peter Manley, he's just got to take that first step and then deal with the next bit after that. First thing he's got to do, he's got to win a leg. We're talking about can Peter Manley win a match? What can Peter Manley do at the end? He's got to win a leg first, got to hit a double. Something he didn't struggle with early on, but he's got to get to him first and he's not getting many chances today. Yeah, well, the next match is Darren Johnson against Andy Jenkins. Now, the only thing that can change is Jenkins catching up into third place right now. But if he loses this match, then it will be all settled in this group uh, about who goes into which groups. We know House and is through. And it could be a tough task for Andy Jenkins because when the pair met yesterday, uh, Darren Johnson was flawless with his finishing. Yeah, four from four in this one. Darren Johnson, he's, he's sort of dipped in and out, but in this game especially yesterday, it was incredible. This was 101 average, I believe it was in this, and Jenkins has walked into a few of those and a few of those bullseye finishes as well. It reminds me of that, say that Richie Howson one where he's prowling around the back of the stage, but Darren Johnson, really, really good performance in this one. He's been decent today at times, especially that game with Peter Manley. His throw really looked on point there, and he's looking decent in terms of the level increasing as we move forward. Whichever group this pair end up in, do you think that they're both capable of making it through to Saturday? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, I think this week we can pretty much put lines through certain players. These aren't two of those players. These are two players that will be competitive and will be looking at getting through to Saturday. Well, let's enjoy this latest battle between the pair. It's Jenkins versus Johnson in the company of this man and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. And many, many congratulations goes to Richie Housen for qualifying for Saturday night's finals here at the Bowdoin Super Series. Andy Jenkins on home turf, on home territory, will be looking to be there. But in what group is that going to be in? That is the question over these next couple of games. Darren Johnson will be returning for the morning shift on Thursday and Friday here at the Super Series. But he is putting some improved performances today. It started off with a defeat to Martin Turner, where he averaged 89. That was followed up by a success by the school line he lost to against Peter Manley, averaging 82. And then last time out, the other side of defeat against Richie Hazard. But again, another good performance, 86.85. And then when you look at Jenkins today, 83 and a half for the 4 0 success against Peter Manley. Then 94 in a 4 1 success against Adam Mould. And then 81.2 average. In a 4-2 defeat to Turner. So if you judge it based on the form that we've seen from this pair today, it should be a tight encounter. 85. Eighty-five. Fifty-nine. course you can get in contact with us here at the modus super series it's at mss darts on facebook twitter and instagram you can get in contact with all your thoughts and opinions i've had 62. a number of tweets talking about the previous conversation we had in the previous match about teams wearing pink and i have to make a public apology 100. because i've had a tweet from the maltese dart saying it is palermo not palmer the team who play in pink and then a tweet from Stephen saying that Huddersfield Town won at Preston North End on Boxing Day wearing pink. Thank you for your comments. We'll keep in touch with those as the day goes on. Andy Jenkins here leaving 131 after 12. 49. Goes downstairs, leaves himself on 82. 60. Andy O'Connor, 82. Double 16. Perfect bullseye. 74. But the double's going to follow. And so Johnson returns to 140. For a break of throw in the opening leg. That is set up perfectly for another. But he couldn't find 82. a bed fellow. And so Jenkins Andy returns to double eight. four to take the opener. Getting shot on the first no leg. messing about Andy from Jenkins. Jenks. Yeah, just saying up there with Chris Murphy that I do feel that. These are two players that will be contending Same for like Saturday, Gannon, but I've just got that feeling on. that Andy Jenkins is going to get through. He sort of has just enough of that retained ability with that same element that you can go and put in that big level of performance 99. like he did against Adam Mould. Adam Mould, someone I expect to get through as well. Andy Jenkins beating 4-1 with a 95 average in that game. 
100. He'd win a Challenge Tour last year. He had a couple of invites to the Pro Tour. They didn't go really to plan for Jenks. But don't know if that's too 100. much of the plan now to get to the Pro Tour. I think he's very happy with where he is in his darts at the moment, which is a very hard thing to find when you're a competitive sportsman, 44. that sort of happy place. And I feel like right now he's there. Ninety-eight, and Andy's at the point of his career where he has achieved a lot, but he still feels as if there's many more things to achieve in the sport. Forty-one, and I really do see the world seniors being one of those targets. One hundred. However, it's Johnson with a luxury of time in this Daniel leg Carr, with the dart. Leaving 104 after 12. And he's going to get a poke at it. Tops. Game shot on Fantastic the finish Johnny on Darren Johnson. And 104 to level this game up at one apiece. Inside the regulation 15. And this has been the mustard-like so levels he's played at all day. If he plays like this tomorrow in Group C, he's going to take some stopping. 100. 100. 83. 35. Yeah, so when we look at the table, it'd be it'd need a bit of a miracle, really, for Andy Jenkins, 85. wouldn't it, to get into Group B. He's going to need a big victory somewhere, or two big victories. He's going to need Adam Mould to lose heavy in both 100. of his games. Can't quite see that happening. So these two will be taking part in Group C with Peter Manley. So we'll get to see that rivalry of Manley and Andy Jenkins continue. 100. Which I'm sure Andy Jenkins will be very happy with it. The prospect of 5 nilling Peter Manley for the week. He only did him up before this even started. 68. Andy O'Carr, 133. Alan Norris added to the mix there. He's going to be an interesting rider for that group. Group C is going to be quite competitive. 75. Alan Norris of the famous Scooter walk on. 45. Andy O'Carr, 58. 58 for Jenkins, a 2 1. Tops it is. Game and tops he hits. Leg. Andy Jenkins. And it has been oh so comfortable with the throw so far. It's all gone with it. At this particular moment in time. Which spells bad news for Davin Johnson because at some point well, he's going to have to find the break. The first game on. Jenkins leads 2-1. But it is Johnson with a higher average. But when you look at the scoring power pack, 60. both with five ton plus throws. No 140 plus is a no 180 so far in this game. Which at the moment is 60. given our legendary world-class referee Paul Hinks' his voice a little bit of a break. 44. Although, let's hope that we get the uh, iconic call at some point soon. 41. One of many top referees we have here at the Super Series. Charlie Corsafine, part of the team. Marco Meyer. 59. We also have Owen Binks as a part of the team. 
last night. Thirty nine. And that one's just caught the flight. That wasn't a that was a bad thrown dart there. It's just caught the flight and changed the direction and where the point has landed. It's just gone into the eighteen. 85. That's what we call an unlucky dart. That is an unfortunate dart. That's the definition of unlucky. Not when you got a dart at a clear open bed and you miss it. That's not an unlucky. 98. That is that a new car? 156. I was just about to say, this has the vibe of one of those games that goes 4-3 where everyone holds a throw. And Darren Johnson... Spoons in a 26 and offers Andy Jenkins a big opportunity now to apply some pressure on the Darren Johnson throw. 99, Darren your car, 130. It's been a bit of a plod along, hasn't it, where the player who's from first has managed to get the double in the end. But Jenkins looking to arrest that trend if he can take out 60. the Wallery 4, which Johnson hit a Andy couple of legs ago. 104. He had a ponder earlier on this and went for the 20s. Stays with that system. Double 16. 72. That would have returned the 104 that Damon Johnson hit against him in the second leg of the match. Doubles haven't been the biggest friend of Darren Johnson over the, the course of today. The but they are in Darren the course Johnson. of this match. If you could just put this all together, the scoring of earlier on with the finishing of this, we will have a player on our hands. Fifth leg, Andy did through first. Game one. Seventy-six. Sixty-four. 83. Your in-running guide has Andy Jenkins around the 1 to 2 point in this game. 58. The bookmakers, the odds compilers fancying Jenkins to get over the line here. I don't think either player feels settled or happy. And the slight advantage in terms of the numbers does come with Andy Jenkins. In terms of the advantage of throwing first. And he's slightly better off on 100. the averages as well. Just two points better off than Darren Johnson's. Another flyer dart there for Andy Jenkins. 70. Trying to lose the line. 85. Andy Ogar, 137. 44. 123, Andy O'Connor, 93. Good last start, but Jenkins on 93 for 3 2 lead. 53, Darren O'Connor, 71. Well, when he's had a charge, Johnson, he's taken it. Two out of two on the doubles. Two pop pop combinations. 65 left, so 15 and bull. Better than the bull. Double 10. 51. Jenkins Andy looked a bit confused 40. by that one when he looked up and saw what was going on on the board. Didn't want to be happy when he looks at the board this time. No score. Darren Yorker, 20. Not the desired result from Andy Jenkins. Two from nine. Johnson. Could be a friend or a foe, that one. Game shot on the Ended fifth leg. Darren kissing Johnson. in off the barrel. We'll call that in off the post. There for Darren Johnson, who breaks the throw for the first time in this match and puts himself one away from victory. Six legs, Darren to throw first. Game on. Now he goes.
favourite in running. One to three. Darren Johnson. That's because he is throwing for the match here. And 55. part of that as well come down to those very wayward darts from Andy Jenkins. The one right up by the double five. The one over by the 18. Just losing a little bit of that 60. action here. We saw it come in the game earlier on. I think it was against Peter Manley when he had that series of throws where he hit 7, 26, 100. 15. One hundred. You can see though it's starting to get to him now. The frustration for Andy Jenkins is building. Eighty five. His fate has pretty much been sealed now. He knows where he's gonna be. That's Thursday and Friday mornings, group C. But you've got to think in the group he is going to be one of the very strong contenders for winning that. Packing out this place on Saturday night. It's going to be a tough group he's involved in, though. It's quite tough for Group C. Mike Huntley, Steve Perr, and Alan Norris, the players coming in. Darren Johnson's going to more than have his say in proceedings. 45. And you may have the final word here because six starts from 181 to seal victory. 45. But that's a slip. And he let us know there, didn't he? He let us know. 59. Down on your car, 136. It's a slip. But it wasn't costly. Still get six darts to get this one wrapped up on the 136. Finishing for Johnson. So 60. much better in this one. He has been very, very off the mark in his previous games. 60% in this one, 3 from 5. 81, down on your class, 76. You can get a fourth. You'll get two points on the board, double eight. 8. The, the double match. four Darren will Johnson. do for Darren Johnson to seal a 4-2 success against Andy Jenkins. And he is playing himself into some form going into the Group C campaign on Thursday and Friday. So success for Johnson up against Jenkins to round off round four of five today. We're going to see Adam Bold in action against Martin Turner in what should be a high quality encounter. And that's coming up after this short break.
Welcome back. Well, before the break, Johnson defeated Jenkins, and that means that everything is settled now in this group. All the places uh, dispersed into the remaining groups for the week. We'll have a look at the table in a moment, but first we'll see what happened in that previous match. Andy Jenkins going down 4-2 thanks to some really good finishing from Darren Johnson, four out of seven, including a fabulous 104 checkout. And as I was saying, that means that we now know the destination of the darters for the rest of the week. Richie House and the group winner, he's through to finals night. Martin Turner and Adam Moe will be in group B on Thursday and Friday nights. And Johnson, Jenkins and Peter Manley will be in Group C, same time, same place as this group on Thursday and Friday from 9.30 a.m. But the next match uh, features Adam Mould and Martin Turner, both bound for Group B. And yesterday, Mould turned it on against Turner. A fabulous 1-4-8 finish to take the lead in the match. And it's a match that he went on to win. Uh, Martin Turner had won Monday's meeting between the pair. So it's one apiece this week. Both bound for Group B, but which one of them will get one up ahead of their campaign to join Richie Housen at finals night? Let's find out with Matthew and Henry. And rightly so, really, both these players are going to be taking their place in Group B. They have been the standout performers in terms of not only the level of consistency that they've shown, neither of these players really dipping down below the 80 mark that we've seen from the other players in this group. And that's what I always keep saying. Consistency is the key to the Super Series. This is a marathon-style event like no other. People are used to... You lose, you go home style of darts. That is not what Adam Mould, the ADC qualifier, is used to. He plays an awful lot of round-robin events, which if you go on the ADC website, you'll be able to see first. the full calendar for Game the on. ADC events and where they take place and how people are doing, the rankings, the averages, all the stats and data, and also how you can book your place here at the Super 96. Series, just like Adam Mould has. And he has booked his place in Group B. Martin Turner... Someone I've got a bit of history with myself. 81. Met him 12 years ago at the UK Open. A very good game there, and I expected to see more from Martin Turner over the years. He's lacked a bit of confidence at times. 100. But he's certainly, and I suppose even when we say he's lacked that bit of confidence, he even alluded to that in his interview himself this morning 96. with Henry. Certainly getting to grips with things here. At the Super Series, he said he's drawing on that experience of the format when he used to play this in Southampton, the old venue for this tournament. He's certainly growing all the time with every day. I'm really interested to see how Group B develops for him and see how he gets on when he takes on the likes of the World Seniors and Match Play Champion Robert Thornton. 140. Robert Thornton, who is still the bookmaker's favourite to win this week at 2-1. to one. 121. Adam Yukar, 121. Mould here, you'd say, is favourite to win this particular leg, leaving 108 after 12. Yeah, the treble 18. 52. Martin Yukar, 156. And so, Turner, 117 for the break. 17. Missed the big number. And so Mould will get an opportunity at 56 to hold his throw. 81. Adam Yukar, 56. Tops. Game no mistake for Mould. Leg. Adam Mould. Turner could have, should have had a dart at Tops to win that first leg. He missed the big number. Mould takes full advantage. And leads this like one, one on the opening first. leg. As you mentioned, Adam Mould playing a lot of Round robin events courtesy of the ADC. And of course, you can win your way into the Super Series as Adam has done via that route. And that's courtesy of a brand new competition called The Vault, which is taking place 40. at various venues up and down the UK. Uh, it's in its second week. Uh, number of winners yesterday uh, taking place events in Manchester, Seaham, Coventry, Bargold, and Middlesbrough. And there's events tonight. Taking place in Hull, which is completely full. There's three spaces left in Workington. Bristol is full up to the rafters. Chester and St. Helens. Well, 
St. Helens is the place to be in the darting world at this present moment in time. 57. Eighty-five. Martin Yoka one hundred and sixty. So Turner with the luxury of time in this second leg. Mold all the way back in the three hundred. One hundred. Solid Turnley sixty-four after twelve. Good leg this in response. Averaging a ton. Fifty-nine. Martin Yoka sixty-four. Potentially be a fourteen data. He'll be happy with the fifteen. If he can nail the double 16, the which line. is exactly Martin what Martin Turner does to level us up at one apiece. You go back to that missed start of the big number where potentially you like Alan to throw first. Game on. took that leg as well. It could have been 2-0 up now. Doesn't seem to be affecting him. That's a sign of someone who has found their confidence. 121. He's spoken that interview, and like I said, I know through conversations that he just lacked that little bit of confidence at times, didn't believe in the ability as 92. much as he probably should have. One thing he'll get from this week is a couple of league tables and 100. some playbacks on YouTube where he can go and he can watch back his level of performance and draw some confidence okay. from the moments that he has won. He's not just one when opportunities have presented themselves he has carved opportunities he's created opportunities he's also 60. resisted some quality darts and opportunities that people are trying to carve against him it has been a very good polished week from martin turner and 99 kind of mold i would not be surprised to see him here on saturday night battling it out for the big one at this present moment so is anyone you don't back to make saturday night uh, i'll go with peter manley I'll head next door and, <laughs> and tell him you said that. 180! Adam, you're going to First match of the match, and how timely that could be. Forcing the issue of mould, unless he can take out the Shanghai. I'll tell you what, that might have actually been a happy deflection. 60. Because that was in the treble. Martin, and 90. I think the second one was in as well. The second one was definitely in. I don't know about the first, but the 68. second one, Out of your class, 60. definitely in. This might be the more for, most fortuitous go at 60 you may ever see in darts. Game shot on the third and Mold takes full Adam advantage. Mold. He's actually hit a 180, trying to go for the 120, but two of them bounced out and still managed to have a go at winning the leg. If you can make it up, like they'll lock you up. Game on. And Mould defies a near 20-point gap in the averages here to lead 2-1. 96. And that is the advantage of throw. When you're throwing first, you get that extra visit to the board. And when you're playing against the darts, you don't need to be 96. playing a great level. And that's what's kind of happened here. We didn't really have a good leg against the turn of throw. And that's where that difference of 16 points and what growing is think? coming from as martin turner takes his average over the 100 mark the gap is now 21. 60. 22 mind the gap adam mold but 22 points in the averages doesn't mean that martin turner is gonna be winning this match because at the moment adam mold is winning the match that is the only column that matters 85. Martin to the Carl bank manager. We see this route way 64. more often for 104. We've seen it again for Martin Turner today. Number 16, 16 tops. One hundred. Martin Carl forty. Stops. Game shot two, two. Flag. Martin Turner. And Martin Turner, who's averaging a ton. That's only good enough to get him level in this game. 13 darts are there. 
Before I got him to throw first. Adam Mould, yeah. who has the darts in the fifth here. The ADC qualifier. He'll be playing Thank in the are. Vault Series, which will qualify you for the Super Series. 13 weeks, one champion, and that champion will make it here. 97. To the live lounge in Portsmouth, and it's over regional events, and the winners of the regions will then go to a bigger pool within their area, and the winner of that will be here at the Super Series. And congratulations to yesterday's winners, Liam Solanke Mitchell, Cameron Anderson, Samuel Price, Connor Hopkins, and Callum Wright. 137. One hundred and forty. One forty leaves mold on a finish. He's just doing what he has to do with the darts. One hundred and forty. Adam Hill car one hundred and fifty five. Well, when your opponent, Martin Turner, is throwing nearly a hundred and four average, you feel at some point an opportunity is going to present itself. Eighty three. Martin Hill car one hundred. Is this the moment? One hundred and twenty seven in game. I think we all, whenever 49. anyone's on a 127, Paul 72. thinks he's on the stick. We all want to see the 127 in game. 72 in game, and game puts Mulder in one of the match. Just a conventional game shot call by call, by, 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 by Paul Hinks. Six leg like Martin to throw first. Game on. Been a long week. Are you unsure about the 127 in game? It actually came in a 40. match between Michael Van Gerwen and Phil Taylor, the PDC World Match Play. It was Michael Van Gerwen, I believe, took out the 127, and Paul Hinks called the 127 and then signed it off with and game. 127 in game. And the 14th leg, or whatever it was. You've had a one, two, seven with Hinks on the call. One hundred and eighty. You've had many of them with Hinks on the call. One hundred and thirty-seven. Will Taylor's face that night. He didn't have a clue what was going on, and Van Gogh just looks at him. If you haven't Thank seen you. it, once we come off air in about. 45 minutes to an hour's time. I suggest you check that one out. It is a bit of a giggle. 100. Out of your car, 150. Never lift it down. So, Turner's going to return for 90 to level us up. And that's yet another Adam Mole bounce out. 45. Martin, you require 90. A 94 level game. Single or treble. Bullseye. 65. Goes a begging. 96. And so 96 from old to see the job through. 80. We went double 80 for tops. Leaves us up double 80 if this 25 doesn't go. Game shot on the six leg. Martin Turner. We go the distance. And Adam Mould has continued to defy a 10 point difference in the averages. It's mainly Turn been because of how Adam good he's been with the darts. And that is exactly what he's got in the seventh and deciding leg. 58. Win for Mould will put him up to second place. Level of points at Turner, but with a gap 135. in the next different stakes of four. Martin Turner wins. He is certified number 57. two. I'd say that if it carries on the form of Martin Turner, where he's averaging over 100, eventually an opportunity will present itself. In the very last leg, the opportunity is now presenting itself. He is 
running with the opportunity. 100. 126 left after just nine darts. Moldy needs to fill. And fill he does. One of oh, but he couldn't quite fill his boots. Martin Ewell car 126. And even more unluckily, he's left himself on a bogey. And so Turner will get six. 90. Sets up for double 18 upon his return for a 13 dart leg to win the match with a ton topping average. 56. Although it should dip below if this double goes in. Game it does go in. It's a 13 darter. It's just above a ton for Turner. A superb performance from him. And it guarantees him second place in Group A, getting the better of Adam Mould by four legs to three. Mould with a number of bounce outs in that game, which ultimately came to cost him at crucial moments. But Martin Turner is a 4 3 victor here. That is the end of round four of five here today at the Super Series. We're going to take a short break. When we return, it is the man at the top of the table. It is a coronation march for Richie Housen as he takes on the King of Cosham, Andy Jenkins. Just three games left to go here in Group A at the Super Series as we return after the Christmas break. Uh, we know Richie Housen is already through, but it was ton-topping Turner before our break there. Brilliant performance from Martin, who won 4-3 against Adam Mould, who did well to, to stay in that game. But Turner's 100-plus average saw him get over the line and secure second spot in the group behind Housen. Uh, we can take a look at that Group A table now. Confirmation of that second place finish for Martin Turner before he plays his final match, which will be against Peter Manley, who is on no points at the bottom of the table. Coming next, though, it is Andy Jenkins taking on Richie House and trying to spoil the victory parade for the table topper and the group winner. Uh, but when they met yesterday, House had well, he put on an exhibition of finishing against Jenkins in the second of his two victories over Rocky this week. Uh, he had an 81 checkout to level the match after a couple of legs, rescuing that shot 
with that treble 13 and tops finish. And then he went on to take out what's now known as the Housen, 116 checkout, a combination that he has completed not once, not twice, not even three times, but four times this week at the Super Series. So the Owl has his own finish named after him. Can he finish with a flourish or will Rocky rock Richie? Let's find out with Henry and Matt. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. And so we enter the final round of matches in Group A here in Week 9 of Series 2 here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth. And we know Richie Housen's going to be the man who's going to be into Saturday night's final courtesy of this group. He can have a couple of days off. He may go back home, spend a couple of days there and maybe come back on Saturday. Or he might enjoy the sights and smells of Portsmouth. Well, Andy Jenkins, whether we went through this group or not, was going to be seeing the sights and smells of Portsmouth. He is the hometown boy here, after all. But for Richie Housen, one of the stars of the World Senior Circuit in 2022, he has kicked off 2023 with some glee here. However... Has Andy Jenkins donned the specs? I was just thinking, I don't remember Andy Jenkins wearing them throughout the day. He was obviously trying something. This is a bit of a freebie game for Andy Jenkins, first really, because through first. the fate of both players is decided. So if you're going to try something, this is your chance to do so. Probably just seeing if he can play with those glasses on. It's probably something he feels he needs, but... 83. Players struggle to make that transition to wearing them because sometimes it just feels like you can catch them on the side of the lens. It's just another obstacle to have to deal with. So makes you think how Gerwin Price was able to play 83. with a big set of ear protectors on, doesn't it? And is that why we see a lot of 45 players go for laser eye surgery and things like that? So they, they get the issue fixed without needing to don the specs, so it's, it's as it was before, effectively. 140. Yeah, and uh, contact lenses is something as well that I know a lot of the players use. 100. Spoke quite a bit in that last match, actually, about the Paul Hinks and the 127 in game. We've got two players on the stage right now who was involved in another Paul Hinks iconic call, which happened in the old Southampton venue. 60. Which was... 124 in game, which came when Andy Jenkins took out the 124. Paul Hinks had a good look at it, called the 124 in game. 85. In the exact same style as the iconic 127 in game. Well, match play. We did just have a little watch of it in between the break there, didn't we? Just to refresh our memories of the iconic moment. 140. Did give us a bit of a chuckle. A legend. Iconic. Paul Hinks. One hundred and eight. Talk about iconic. That's the iconic call. Seventy-eight in game. Double three. Game shot on the first leg. Richie House. And he gets a break of throw in fifteen. And that look from Andy Jenkins. As to say, what on earth happened there? Second leg, Richie to throw first. Game on. Probably thinking, why has he gone that way for? Probably thinking, why one. always me? <laughs> the 1 3 2 finish on day one when Jenkins was looking like wrapping up the match. The bullseye finish at 3 Six 3. Eight. And Jenkins was hoping to wrap the match up. And he's probably just thinking, whatever this guy does, it just seems to work for him. Why get one double if you can get two? 96. One hundred and forty. That was a breaker throw from Housen. We spoke about how when that dart goes in the bottom of the bed, he'll be expecting, 100. he'll be disappointed with that. One hundred and eighty. Second max for Jenkins. Leaves himself on one, two, one after nine. Forty-seven. And the issue against the darts of Richie Housen. Six from here. 
Doesn't have to think of the bull. 34. One eighty thirty four. It's often one eighty twenty six, isn't it? That's the usual expression. You've got eighty seven. But now Richie Housen's put himself in a good position. Jenkins need to take this one. Game shot on the second leg. And Italians back to that moment of Richie Housen levels up the game. All things back to where we started with Andy Jenkins throwing first. That was a 14 for Andy Jenkins, first. despite the 34 in the setup play. Average over 100. This is the Andy Jenkins we saw earlier on in game six. And he got the 4-1 victory over Adam Mould. In fact, it's an even better version of that Andy Jenkins. The specs work. 90. As we have a look at the overhead angle of the Entry into the ball of the two players darts. 140. You see yet another Andy Jenkins 140. That's his third of this match. Twinned with two maximums and an average, as you can see on your screen, of 109.2. 59. Housen averaging 89 and a half has had two opportunities at double. He's taken one of them in that bizarre 78 combination. Jenkins just got to be careful here with the treble five in the second dart. So Alex to go down towards the 16s. That leaves himself on another famous finish in this sport. 138. We're going to see Dello at the seniors in a couple of weeks' time. This was the finish that he made famous all those years ago. And he'll 138. But Jenkins will not follow suit 40 years on. That's an incredible 82. 40 years ago. Famous finish. Can't be that famous. He never mentions it, does he? You'd think he'd uh, bring it up every now and then. 100. And your car 56. Tops. Back-to-back -to -back 14 dart legs. 16. This is what I spoke about earlier with Jenkins. When he's getting those darts, it's so close to the mark. He needs to get the other side of the wire. I mean, he's going to be dangerous. I mean, he's going to be one of the big favourites anyway in terms of 59, the group C. 40. Game shot on the third leg. Andy Jenkins. Tops has been so fruitful for Andy Jenkins today. It is again there. 2-1 he leads and it's a game being played in good spirit. Both players Raising a smile at the end Both of the leg. Richie to throw first. Game on. And a joke, sharing a laugh. One on and Housen getting a share of the spoils when it comes to the 180 stakes. But look how plump that first dart is for Jenkins. 100. Be unlucky with just a ton there. What can Housen do in response? Forty three. I genuinely think Andy's having the time of his life up there. And this is a guy who, when you asked him on Monday, are you looking forward to this week? He's answered with a very blunt and abrupt no. If this is him not enjoying something, I'd like to see what he's like when he does. One hundred. Now business faced. One hundred and forty. Pining in a fourth one forty of the game. Average ticks over a ton again. Fifty-eight under your car. One hundred and sixty-one. Forty-one. Richie will car one hundred and twenty. In a bit of a slip, which allows Housen in here with the one twenty. He's been so good around these finishes this week. 
That's a nice little marker there. They just couldn't find a 60, route across. And so, 120. Well, Jenkins show Housen the way to do it. Tops. 80. Richie will class 60. Game shot on the fourth Ever leg, since Richie the first leg of this match, it's had the vibe that Housen is just clinging on to Andy Jenkins at the moment, who clearly wants to run away with this one, and it's it's like Andy Richie's the third just yeah. clinging on to this match. The longer that you cling on to something, the longer you're in the match, the more opportunity you've got. 140. Because the mistakes now from Andy Jenkins will be highlighted because there isn't that opportunity to recover. If there is any mistakes. 43. Let's open this one with a 140. 47. Richie Howson is like a fly. And you just sit down to eat your dinner and it wants to buzz around you all the time. You're trying to swat it away, but it just keeps coming back and buzzing around you. 140. There's some people that are like that when they open their wallet. Not naming names. 140. Forty-three. An opportunity here for that fly to land on the dinner. He is buzzing around Andy Jenkins. He can't swat him away on this occasion. He's going up on the blind side. Eighteen for tops. One hundred and thirty-eight. Andy Carr, one hundred and thirty-one. As we said, whenever there's a player alive in a game, there's always an opportunity that they're going to hurt you. Always an opportunity that they're going to dish out the punishment. Richie Houghton is one good dart away Richie from that. Following 40. the 12, good darts he's thrown in here, leaving a double after 12, 140, 140, 138. Game shot on the fifth leg. 13 Richie dart leg for Richie Houghton. That's the break of throw he has been looking for. And that's just a good testament to that statement of to stay in the game. Any opportunity like to throw or any mistake is highlighted. I said this on Monday. I said it on Tuesday. I'm going to say it again today. I've never seen Andy Jenkins smile so much in my life. And I think I met Andy 85. for the first time about 12 years ago. 100. Ninety-six. But in and amongst the fun, there is some seriously good start, uh, seriously good darts on that stage. I mean, Frandy Jenkins, this is his best performance of the day. Might, it might even be the best performance of the week. It is. This is Andy Jenkins' best performance of the week so far. He is three-two down to Richie Housen. He could One lose it four-two. Despite the stats suggesting. This is the best version of Andy Jenkins we have seen. 55, Richie O'Carr, 140. To win it in style. It's going to come back. Love a treble here 41. to set up tops. However, 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 however. That single one leads him on 99. That's as bad an outcome as you could have got. The only 99s Richie Housen wanted to see was a South Sea Seafront tomorrow, and he's celebrating group success. But he's going to have to pin it now, and Jenkins is not on a finish. So it gives him some luxury of time. Chops, tops. So I'll go treble 16. 51. Yeah, as a 16 player myself, I like that play. 
set up what you want. Give yourself two what darts at your preferred day. shot, but it's going to be under Richie pressure because Andy Jenkins fires in the fifth maximum of this game. Three in the column of Andy Jenkins, two in the column of Richie Howson. Game but it's four the in the leg Richie column Howson. for Richie Howson, and that is four and game for Richie Howson who completes his campaign. That is the end of Richie House, and we will not see him now until Saturday when he comes back for finals night. Andy Jenkins, we will see again tomorrow morning. Group C kicking off at 9.30. That's where you're going to see Peter Manley, but not before we get to see him one more time today. He will be coming up next as he takes on Martin Turner. Welcome back. Just uh, a couple of games to go here at the Super Series in Group A. And Richie House and signs off in style with a victory over Andy Jenkins, who performed pretty well himself in that game. A 95.27 average, but it wasn't enough to overcome the Owl, who just keeps on winning and has just flown above the rest of the players in this group since the first start was thrown on Monday. Uh, we'll take a look at how dominant he's been in this Group A table. Six points clear of his closest rival, Martin Turner, who is looking to sign off with a win himself in the next game. Adam Mould will join Turner in Group B in the evening sessions on Thursday and Friday. And then Johnson, Jenkins and Peter Manley are all going to be in action in Group C when we resume our coverage at 930 here on Thursday and Friday on Sporty Stuff TV and the Modus Super Series YouTube channel. Uh, the next game is Martin Turner against Peter Manley. Uh, Manley, he's still looking for his first victory in this group. Hasn't got off the mark yet. Hasn't got off the mark yet in terms of legs at all today. And it's going to be a difficult task against Martin Turner who is, has been the second best player in the group, as we just saw there. The players just making their way to the stage ahead of this penultimate match of the day. Manley, well, he did manage to run Turner close when they met in their opening match yesterday. He actually ended up missing a dart to win the game before Turner took out that tops the double that Manley had missed to win it 4-3. So will it be 
uh, an, an end that Manley has been waiting for as he comes to the stage looking to pick up his first points of the week and his first leg of the day. Martin Turner standing in his way, Henry Deacon and Matthew Edgar on standby to talk you through it. Thank you, Chris. And yes, Peter Manley is legless. Still going to get his first leg of the day on the board against Martin Turner, who, as you saw in that VT, did run in close. But on the evidence of today's play, it looks like a convincing win ahead for Martin Turner. Yeah, Martin Turner's played well, hasn't he, today? He beat Andy Jenkins in his last game. He's always been around about the 85 sort of mark today. He played very well in his opening game, beating Darren Johnson 4-0. So we know he's got a 4-0 in the locker there. Darren Johnson, good level of performance. Martin Turner, though, dropped it. Against Richie Howson. That's that one 4 1 down at the 72, but he's showing signs. First leg is that he's to starting first. to believe in himself. Game on. He's quite high at the moment in the WDF rankings. Means we could be seeing him taking a place at Lakeside. Something he has been hunting this year. He's been putting in the miles, doing the laps, five. making sure that he can chase down one of those positions. Manly, yet to hit a max. 78. That's, a, that's an extended max. 78 straight across the, the treble bed. One out of And for a player like Martin Turner, sometimes it's not about ability, it's about belief in these kind of scenarios. Where 60. it feels as if now he's got that confidence in himself. And as a consequence of seeing the best of his game, which was naturally there, come to the four. 60. Oh, yeah, his sort of age now, it's not that his ability levels are, have gone up, it's just the the belief to produce those 85. and replicate. 140. And just like we were talking with Richie House and Martin Turner, the same, when he gets that Start just underneath the bottom wire there. It just becomes so inviting for the one hundred for the fill up Martin for the one forties for the one eighties. There's chance at the house and forty seven. Wasn't happy with that one. Leaves himself to sixty nine. Eighty-one, Martin McCarr, sixty-nine. This would subject Manly to a fourteenth consecutive leg Each loss. On the first leg, Martin Turner. No mistake for Martin Turner. Takes out the sixty-nine. Leads Manly by a leg to nil. Who, if he does succumb to a four defeat, like will have a leg first. dip as a minus fifty. And it feels like a, a two-way story when it comes to Manly. We saw him just provide bits on Monday. That was competitive on Tuesday. But today, he'd like to consign to the starting history books. 45. Fifty-seven. Eighty-four. As he gets that first start in the treble, you just start to think, don't you? Is he going to get that first maximum? It's game number 15 of the week so far for Peter Manley. We're going to see him another 10 times. We're going to see him tomorrow and Friday morning. And you can also see Peter Manley at the Circus Tavern, dartshot.tv, for tickets for the World Seniors Darts Championship. We're going to have the reigning champion of that event, Robert Thornton, with us tomorrow night. We'll have a chat with him about that, 26. no doubt. Martin, you're so we're going to see him in action across four games on 10pm 
on Sporty Tough TV tomorrow. Turner, 1-6-4 for a 2-0 lead. Would he go for the ball? He does go for the ball. And he wasn't too far away. Forty five, Matthew Carr, twenty five. He took double twelve in the last in one dart, he, he does the same the here. Leg. Martin Turner. Martin Turner doubles his lead, breaks the throw, and Peter Manley is in serious, serious trouble now when we're looking at the, the possibility first, of a day on. that goes without winning a single leg. 125. Turner is one darting, one dart. 81. And he's turning the screw. He is sensing the opportunity to condemn Manly to that minus 50. Legs at the bottom of the table and the legless day. It's even pointless in the group. Which hasn't happened before. Not in a three day group at Six least. Eight. You'll be back tomorrow on Friday morning, so you will get a second chance. 63. But you've got to give credit to Manley's opposition as well because we mentioned earlier it could be quite easy in this scenario to go through the motions and things kind of become trickier than 35. what they should be. Matthew but McQuarrie, 96. there's no let up in performance levels. Double 18 for Turner. 78. Plenty of breathing room. Manley all the way back on two, seven, six. 21. The Premier League player. There's a lot of chat about Premier Martin League at the moment, 18. isn't there? And who's going to be in? Who's going to be not? Peter Manley. One of the players that in the early incarnations of the Premier League. Game I was just about leg. to say, I would advise Martin here to consider the split on the two because that dart looked awkward. We lost the bounce out. He didn't need to chase down the nines. He just slots it in the double nine. Makes it drama Four three. Five, to throw first. Game three on. is the score line. And he's seemingly been as free as a bird in this match. Been a struggle today for Peter Manley. 57. He'll be the first to admit that. Well, I've got the opportunity. We'll give you the answer to the Tungsten teaser. And that was how many legs were played in last night's World Championship final. The One correct hundred. answer. 46. Must, uh, we did get 45. a couple of correct answers as well. The production room, they don't get sight of the questions before... We go out, and I must say congratulations to Scalping Tyler, who actually got it right. 55. If Manley is going to win a leg, this is the most likely one. Turner. 97. His first treble after nine. But Manley has the advantage of throw and a 60-point swing on the scoreboard. Eighty-five. We need to stop getting excited when that first dart hits the treble. Eighty-six. Peter Carr, one hundred and sixty-one. Bill Manley's going to get darts on a double in this one. As Martin fills this up, you feel disadvantage, Manley. 100, Peter Ricard, 106. To win a leg at the last possible juncture. He's got it done at top. 86, Martin Ricard, 106. Oh, so almost for Peter Manley. And so Turner to wrap things up. 16 for tops. 
Tots to Turner to win seconds. in style. Peter it's a man who has a chance to win his first leg of the day. Double five. No a score. grimace Matthew on the face of Peter Manley. Game shot on the match, Martin Turner. And so Martin Turner seals a 4-0 win. Peter Manley shakes his hand sportingly. He knows it hasn't been the day that he would have liked here at the Super Series, but it's Turner who seals the win. 4-0 against Peter Manley, who had chances to win that final leg. But Turner will see himself in Group B tomorrow night and will be a preeminent contender to get through there. We're going to take a short break. Upon our turn, Darren Johnson against Adam Mould. And then we're also going to hear from Richie Housen upstairs with Chris Murphy. Welcome back. I'm joined by the man of the moment, the winner of Group A, Richie House. And uh, Richie, just, just give us a few thoughts on how the week's gone for you so far. Yeah, mixed bag, really. I'm really, really pleased with it. the actual overall result, only losing two games out of 15. Um, but to be fair, I've, I've been a bit under the weather this week and I've, I've felt pretty rough, so I haven't really felt like I'd be best, although I did play really well on the, on the first day. And I felt like I've struggled through the other days, but... It's just all about the results, really, I suppose. Yeah, well, we'll take a look at the league table. We'll let you see it now because it looks very good for you. Four points out of Martin Turner has just ended the day with that victory over Peter Manley there. Um, for you, getting through to Saturday night, having said that you feel under the weather a bit, is it good now to have a couple of days rest? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, when I come here this week, I was just really probably maybe trying to aim for the Thursday or Friday evening. Um, not really expecting to, to qualify by the Wednesday but when you get in that position and if you feel a bit rough it's nice to know you've got a couple of days off to, to get yourself back to 100% uh, and hopefully give it give it everything on Saturday. Yeah all eyes on Saturday for you but also all eyes on the Circus Tavern as well. Uh, you were a big story there last year, a uh, big support. I know you live just literally yeah, around the corner literally from there the corner. and you're going to be there again this time. This this kind of week is a senior's feel so it's a good chance for you to measure your game against oh, those other players. Yeah it's great, it's a great practice. Um, and it's only, only a few weeks away, really. We've got another seniors qualifying event uh, to go. Um, so it's a bit more practice. But yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to the, to the tavern. And to be fair, if I played like I did at the beginning of the week, there's no reason why I couldn't do some proper damage there, to be honest. And are you aware that this week you've managed to actually get your own checkout named after yourself? We've got the 156 <laughs> Barneville, the 138 Della, the 116 is now the house of. <laughs> 
<laughs> four I think times. I think I've eaten a few times, haven't yeah. I? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you'll treat us to one more of those on Saturday night, Hopefully. but we'll let you uh, go and get some rest. Thanks well so much, done. Please. Thank you. And we've got one more game to come today. It is Darren Johnson against Adam Mould. Last game of the day, last game of the group. And then we shut down Group A and that table that you've already seen, all booked, confirmed. And we move into Groups C and Group B tomorrow, which both these players will be playing in. Aaron Johnson will move through to Group C. Adam Mould, you'll catch him in the evenings. And I've been really, really impressed with Adam Mould. Didn't know what to expect from him. We had a big range of performance. Where was he going to pitch? Well, he's pitched himself bang in the middle with consistency. That's something, when you look at the stats and the data, that I didn't think would be the word I would be using for Adam Mould. I thought we were going to be talking about the range in which of his performance. First leg, Darren to throw first. Game on. But this one, for me, I think represents a little bit of value in the Adam Mould column. Darren Johnson did get his victory in the last game against Andy Jenkins but it was just a 74 average he has been very hit 41. and miss and more often not miss I think Adam Mould represents some very very good value in this match member 18 plus be gambleaware.org if you are having a flat on the darts what did you take from that Richie Housen interview obviously he said he's been a little bit under the weather and he's happy with the result. Do we see maybe an even stronger version of Richie House on Saturday after he's had a couple of days 100. to have a rest and take in the sights of Portsmouth? I think he's one of those players that will benefit from having that rest, a little bit of time off. It can, it can be a chore if you, if you play the five days in the final if you're under the weather. We saw it a few weeks ago with Mark Dubbidge in the, le in the other Legends week we had, and he wasn't feeling too great. And if he played the five days, he probably wouldn't have made it through. Just because he was feeling quite lethargic, he was suffering of a cold and things like that. So to get through, I think it'll benefit him having those few days off. If you're under the weather, the, it can Such be it. hard at times. But one thing you always get from Richie in an interview is you'll, you'll get honesty and he'll tell you absolutely everything he thinks and feels. As Adam Mould piles in the first match of the match. But we haven't seen Thornton yet, but you put him as... Early favourite to Adam, go on and seven. pick up the weekly title. Mould heavy favourite to win this leg. Tots for the leg. Game Tots to win side. the leg. Adam and a break of throw in 15 for Adam Mould. Leads by a leg to nil against Darren Johnson. The next time these two can possibly play each other will be a finals night Second on Saturday. First. Game on. Mould will be in Group B. In the evening session on Thursday and Friday, whereas Darren Johnson nice will be part of the daytime session here at the Modus Super Series. Maybe if you're tuning in to us via the Modus Super Series YouTube channel, don't forget to drop us a subscribe because on top of the live coverage, we'll bring you bonus behind the scenes content, highlights, game of the day, other things behind the scenes of the team here at the Super Series. 55. I think one of my favourite features on that was the one at Christmas. That was good fun, wasn't it? So that, that I enjoyed that one, and I believe he was doing the interview that day. It took us a bit longer, me and Glenn Durant, didn't it, to get our one done? <laughs> Not as bad as Charlie and Owen Binks. They were awful. 42. We literally, every, every single question, we had, we had to stop, cut, go again. 58. And in fairness, I suppose you'd have to have a couple of takes if you're trying to get a serious answer out of own Binks. Well, he fully commits 100. to everything. Have you seen that video circling around on Twitter of when he was at the Alexandra Palace and the dancers was doing That's the... given me nightmares. <laughs> it's given me nightmares. I can't What's sleep without thinking about it. because you've watched it about a hundred times though. 58. 
I just had to check whether it was for real. Well, Adam Mould is proving time and time again that he is for real. Every single time we see him, he's impressive. This would be impressive. Game After having your leg. throat Darren broken, Darren Johnson replies with a 1-6-4 finish on the ball. When you've got it in the locker, you never know when it's going to come Good out. Like Darren to throw first. Game on. See Moldy in the background trying to on. G himself up, getting the snarl going. Six days. How are these two players in the respective groups that they're going to be in tomorrow in Friday? Who would you say has got the better One chance hundred. of progressing through to the final? Oh, absolutely, Adam Mould for me. I would be very, very surprised if we don't see him playing on Saturday. He needs to switch. The amount of darts he's lost on the floor already. I'm surprised that he was gambling going for that one. It was very, very loosely in the board. He'll probably be quite happy at the one because he's going to knock that 60 out with not much of a touch of the dart. One hundred. Ninety six. Not sure exactly what the thinking of Darren was there on that one. But one hundred. Let's see if Moldy doesn't hit a treble. They got away with it. However, 120 is well within the range of Adam Mould. 96. Well, this would be a tiddling compared to the 164 that Johnson netted in the last leg. Trouble for tops. Not going to go. So Johnson 110 to lead this game 2-1. Tops. 70, Adam Yorkar, 20. Grazing the wire. But Mould returns to double 10 for the break of throw for 2-1. It's been a break of on so far. And that trend, Adam that trend continues. Adam Mould's 2 out of 2 on the doubles. That miss there from Johnson on the back of the 110 was actually the first dart missed at double in this game so Both far. Like Adam to throw first. Game on. And it's Mould who has the dart to open up a two-leg gap and to put himself one away. 82. Good recovery, the last dart. 58. 100. One hundred and twenty one. One hundred. One hundred and eight. That's Johnson's first of the game. He's on one for two. Mold now beginning to chase in this leg. 59. Daniel Carr, 142. He took out a 164 for his first leg. He won't be taking the 142, which gives Adam Mold the chance to retaliate. 46. Adam Carr, 160. 160 finish of his own. One hundred. Daniel Carr, ninety six. Seventy. 
60. Out of your class, 60. Let's go, leg away. Tops mold once. And now, double 10. Game shot on the four flag. Adam Mould. Which he gets. Which he pins and uh, Mould is a leg away. Leading Darren Johnson by three legs to one. Three like out of four on the doubles. It's been, it's been an okay performance from Adam Mould. Ninety-seven. Of course, a reminder that we are back tomorrow morning from half past nine in the morning for action from Group C. Me and Chris Murphy okay. will be swapping roles. I'll be up on the balcony, whilst Chris Murphy will be taking you, you through commentary of fifteen live matches, and then we will work roll reverse 100. again in the evening session where Murph will be up on the balcony, and I'll be alongside Matthew Edgar in the commentary box, who's going to be in the booth for all 25 matches tomorrow, Friday, and then Saturday night for the finals, which you can be a part of by heading over to dartshot.tv. Tickets for every single Saturday for the rest of this series are available and are 82. free of charge. So do come and join us here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth for the finale of the Modus Super Series. Doesn't look like we're heading towards a finale 76. in this match. Just yet, at least. Johnson with the advantage here in leg five against Mould, who has that 3-1 advantage. 94. For making inroads is Mould. Huge inroads. Timely max. And this one to eight, your sense has to go. It's in the 54. That leads 20. That is a Jonathan superb Blake. finish from Darren, Darren Johnson. Johnson. He's won two legs in this match, both of them courtesy of ton topping finishes. A 1 6 4 to win his first leg, a 1 2 8 there, 3 2 now. But Adam Mould has six the dance to seal success on. in this particular leg. 140. And starts well. Ton 40 to start. Sixty. Has that forced the hand of Darren Johnson? Fifty-seven. Ninety. Still advantage mold. One hundred and thirty-four to leave himself on the fish. After nine, nothing Johnson can do. One hundred and four. But applied pressure. That's exactly what he does. Sixty-six. What a recovery with that final dart. Just as things began to look a bit squiffy, he's managed to conjure out a treble. It's still only a 104 finish. 85. Adam Yukar, This for the match. It's been a brilliant debut campaign for Adam Mould. The ADC qualifier 80. almost finished Adam on a Yukar, high. And Darren Johnson's already got two ton plus finishes in this match. He may need a third here. Treble. Would have left the ball, and so Adam Mould will return to the board, wanting double eight. Adam Yukar, 16. Game and the ADC Adam qualifier ends with a win. He has been the standout star in Group A. He will progress his way through to Group B tomorrow and Friday night and boy if he plays at these levels has he got a chance of qualifying for Saturday night's finals but let's have a look at the tail of the tape from this one Adam Moldy 4-2 victor against Darren Johnson with an average of 87.62 two maximums to his name four out of eight on the doubles 
Darren Johnson winning two legs, both of them with ton plus finishes. But it is Adam Mould who is the victor. We're going to see him tomorrow night in Group B. Darren Johnson in the daytime in Group C. And to round off the Group A action, they head up to the balcony and join Matthew Edgar alongside Chris Murphy. Yeah, thanks, Henry. I hope you all enjoyed that as much as he did. Uh, Darren Johnson losing out to Adam Mould 4-2. A couple of real uh, top finishers there as well. 1-6-4, 1-2-8. But let's just uh, look at the league table, the final confirmation of that. Richie House, and I chatted to him earlier, did it while playing under the weather, Matt. Yeah, which is a really good testament to him as well when you can still produce it. He didn't produce his absolute best. He did at times, but he produced enough. And that's a good sign going forward into Saturday that when you look at the players he's beat already, and they'll be aware because he'd probably let them know. I know I certainly would let them know. If I felt under the weather and topped the group, I'd want them to know that that wasn't me at my absolute best. So when it comes to Saturday, there's do like this way that little bit of fear factor regarding Richie Housen. Yeah, we move into our double days of darts now. So we're going to take a look at the groups for the rest of the week so Richie Housen as Matthew just said is through to Saturday night will return then for finals night group C on the right hand side of your screen gets underway 9 30 tomorrow and then group B at 10 p.m. now we'll go through those groups individually starting with C Alan Norris for me is a big favorite for that group last time he was here he played really well um, but I want to talk about Peter Manley again because didn't win a match this week didn't win a leg today but Steve Perrin the man written below him there he didn't win a match last time he was here is that where Manley's looking to get a win it must be, really, because when you look at that group, that's quite a tough group, actually. That's like another Group A, really, when you look at the top four players in that. That is going to be tricky to pick those apart. Say Alan Norris is playing well, Andy Jenkins in and out, Darren Johnson in and out, Michael Huntley played very well last time he was here and also has just qualified for the World Seniors Championship as well. So it's going to come down to those four, but the advantage of that that they don't have with Group A is actually two of those are going through, not just the one. Yeah, and Group B3 will go through from that. Five starts on 10 p.m. tomorrow night, as I mentioned and two greats of the game in it in Robert Thornton and Trina Gulliver yeah Robert Thornton's really retained quite a lot of that ability hasn't he and we've seen that in regards to what he's done at the World Seniors winning the World Seniors Championship and also the match play Adam Mould though for me is a player that I'm I'm very very sure he's going to get through that Martin Turner as well I think that could be the three Right, yes, yeah, so Trina Gulliver, 10-time world champion. Robert Thornton, the reigning seniors world champion. They'll be in action tomorrow evening. Manley will be back in the morning, as will we. So do join us at 9.30am, live on Sporty Stuff TV and the Modus Super Series YouTube channel for another double day of darts action. But in Group A, from Monday to Wednesday, it was the Owl who flew high.